Out of them. Appreciate you, Hua. I got, I got that echo, it's a little loud on me. Appreciate them. That's a nice one. Austin came my first time I heard that one. Ain't that something? What is it? He wasn't fair with him? Yes, sir. That's tight. He was unfair. He was unfair to him. Dog, that's interesting. How you come up with that one? Man, that's interesting. <laughs> Stolen. A lot of thievingism going on. I heard Bernie Mac said that too. He said, Y'all new artists. He said, I'm telling y'all now, y'all new comedians. Don't use your stuff around these people. He didn't got the stick. Nah, that's all right. Now, that's a nice one now. Got to turn up that background on now. That's nice though. That's all right. And everybody appreciate your who, huh? It's still on the way. Oh, the winning team put me on that one. <laughs> I didn't know that one. That's awesome. I, they said, I bet that they said, Austin got a new one. I said, he got a new one. Yeah, like he wasn't fair to him. <laughs> and then I heard Jaheed on that. I said, <laughs> I said, I said this is very interesting. I just, and, that, and that was amazing. He said, he said yeah, Austin got, oh, they, they love that one. I said, hey, he said, oh, you ain't heard it? I said, I heard the voice. I said, who is that talking? No wonder Jai he said. They're coming. Woo, boy. Woo. If he give me, if he give me screen, he ought to give me bail money. I know I'm gonna need bail money to go with it. Woo, that Jai. Woo, bail money, bail money. I'm gonna give him a sign of cartoons. Are about all right? We say to who everything he has done, everything he's doing, everything he's going to do, at the end of the day. We're here to do one thing. Make sure we get that thing right with your hood. Isn't that right? On every end, every concept, trying to make sure we um, are minded of what we got to do. Uh, that's my earnest um, desire above everything is making sure that we got it right. Don't want to run this race and get to the end and find out I was wrong. That, that, that's dangerous. You know, I don't want my own will, my own way. I don't want to um, have my own mind when it comes down to it. You know, we were reading last night in uh, Corinthians, he talked about that, how, you know, the wisdom of Elohim, and you realize why we didn't know him, because of our wisdom. I don't want that, I don't want that wisdom. You know, our wisdom will see something different. Our wisdom will try to find its own way. Our wisdom will try to rationalize it marginalize what he told us to do. And before you knew it, you'd be off the pathway. Many men have trapped this road we own. When I said men, men and women, and they falling astray, falling aside. A lot of them were slain, not for the debacle. Well, no, they were all killed for the debacle. So pretty much everybody been killed for the debacle, whether you were killed because you transgressed or you were killed before you because you obeyed it. I just want to make sure when I die, I want to die right. Ain't that right? I want to die right when I die. Since I got to die, I don't want to die. I might as well die right. That's the truth too. You know, that's always the, um, the goal. And our young people, I can't stress again, the importance of you guys really evaluating and um, considering what you're doing, the direction you're going, and the importance of why you need to make it, start making changes. Don't worry about what your friends do. I know a lot of times, a lot of things depending on your friends, what your friends do. I mean, we ride bikes, yes, your friend, you're going to ride your bike because you want somebody to ride it with you. You want to skate, you want to know somebody that's going to skate. A lot of things depending on other people, you know what I'm saying? I don't, you realize, I remember sometimes I had, I had to walk to the store, so I was good for trying to see who wanted to walk to the store. They'd be like, nobody want to walk, trying to make up something. They just talk. You get a talk and it start moving. But they know it, we done made it to the store. I had a friend, I used to come him, man, I used to come that joke every side. I said, he like, man, I ain't going to your stuff. I said, man, I have a conversation before you know we at the store. I ain't, every time I get him, every, oh yeah, I had him every time. He, he won that, he won that bright, and I appreciate him too. <laughs> I do. He was a good friend. He was, he was a good friend too. He was a good. Cause if somebody bright would have called and said he when he looked out that door and came out there, cause we be cause we were pulling that wagon too. See, and so if it's two of us, you don't know who wagon that was. You seen both of us pulling that wagon, and I could lie, and I was gonna make sure they gonna know that was his wagon. And he went to that school, and he, I would say so I was, you know, I was a pretty good Jonah. He said, shut up, nigga, you be putting that little red wagon to the store. 
Listen, listen. Look, listen, I get a full strength. You think I'm in high school. Do this make sense? Then he'll break them down like, this make sense. And it showed it. But I, listen, I can't. So he realized, oh, he's just joking. That's exactly what he's doing. Ooh, no, this thing get out, man. I was like, Musha, sure, this thing getting on. I'm going to have to flee to school. Here we go, then let's go. We should take the buggy and push the buggy. They wound up putting a gate around. They got tired of them buggy, and I had to take them back. So it was, you know, when I hated then. You had a hill and a curve, so I ride the back of that buggy back to the store in that curve. Them folks put a rail up. Them buggy couldn't leave that store no more. Here we go, we bought a little red wagon. I said, man, just surely want me dead, don't you? I said, you just, I mean, this man just got it in for me, man. Why, why, who buy that kid a, a little red wagon? So we sit in the store, we'll have it in there, put it inside a little thing, and the kid be out there just riding on the wagon. My dad said, go out and tell them kid got that wagon. I'm like, this is going to be tight. <laughs> that means in my wagon. So you trying to put this thing together in your mind the whole way to get out here and convince them got their wagon without there being a problem. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you want it more than you thinking, hmm, how we gonna get this done and don't make a mess out of this whole thing? <laughs> Woo, well, we're rough. Y'all kids got it made now. Y'all got it made. But it'll make it build character. You need some things in your life to let you see when your who allows you to develop and grow and change from things. You can appreciate. A lot of times, like with Yasharon, one thing um, that would have got them to appreciation of what they had, which wasn't a lot, because the people that had the land before them didn't make a big hoopla about the land. Nobody had signs up talking about we hills and valleys. It was when they got that they recognized they came out Mizraim. They didn't, who, I mean, the people that, why would they recognize? I mean, it rains everywhere. Why would they care? But when you're in Mizraim and you got to carry water, then you get somewhere and the water come to you. You said, man, ain't that grand? Ain't that something? But see, they had to be in a different situation. See why a lot of us don't appreciate things? It's because you ain't never been in a different situation. Right. I'm just telling the truth. I, I learned that. You, man, you learned it. Ooh. Like, give us the day, our daily bread. It depends on what you had. There's some people grew up. I mean, it, it, was, it was basically what they, it wasn't no change. It was the same thing, a little of. Yeah. I think uh, the twins, I think, I think you said they had to steal food. You had to steal. People don't appreciate it. They don't, but, you know, they don't realize, you know, be able to sit down and eat. People take for granted. Right. I mean, why wouldn't I eat? Who ain't got food? Listen, I'm going to have the earth. You'd be surprised, people, it, a lot of it. Man, they were showing the Gazians, the people, the Palestinians over there. Man, they were showing them folks scrapping for food to get that food out. I said, man, look at him. Living like, listen, got to live like an animal. Listen, and it's every man for itself. You know what I'm saying? And for a parent, you got to eat before you can feed your kid. So it's like, it's something you got to have strength. You want to feed your kid, but y'all fighting and bucking to get what you can. You can only get so much. And then when you get it, how you know somebody going to take it from you? Somebody who's stronger, see you and say, well, I'm fighting them for it. I just take yours. So it's just so many things that um, we, we, we've taken for granted. Uh, we hadn't appreciated it. And, it, and it, it's to, um, to uh, um, it comes to allow us to appreciate, just like good health. I remember, oh shoot, man, my health. Phew. It's like almost hard to remember when I had a cold. You know, you stayed well so long, you ain't had like to say, over. Oh, boy, you don't have an ache and a pain, you ain't even got a back, so you got a gristle. You think of a gristle, you be telling your back, back, get out of here, boy, you got a gristle, you think of a gristle. They were like, old folks tell you, you don't even know what, you don't even know what a back is. Because you're a kid, they didn't want to hear no stuff like that. You get, and you take things for granted, and you watch other people, and then you look around, and you realize, I'm one of them people. Yeah. One of them people got to go to the hospital. I'm not even to go with other people. Now you got to, you got to make an appointment. Go to the doctor for like, I got a doctor appointment. You got a doctor appointment. You don't go to no doctor appointment when you're young. Like, you go now. Yeah. You set them things up like the dating game. <laughs> I remember I had to have a, uh, um, what that was, the kidney thing when they put the catheter. catheter. Is that what is the catheter they put in? Yeah, um, Danny showed up down there. We was down there. I seen them guys, man, I woke up. I didn't even remember he was there until it was, I didn't even remember seeing him. That lady was talking to me. She said, you real funny. She said, tell me one of them jokes. I got to tell her joke. I was out. When I woke up, I was, I was part by a back. Then she, she said, she said, you real funny. She said, tell me one of them jokes. I said, I was gone. <laughs> Listen, when I woke up, I was laying by a door on a, um, on the strip, man, I said, oh my goodness, what didn't happen to me? You know, just looking at, whoo, then my wife had to go to, a, we had to go to appointment to take it out. We were sitting in that hallway, and we were sitting in the waiting room. I was looking at, everybody in there were right at the point of death, and they were couples. I had been looking around the room, I was looking at these people. I said, man, I said, these for old to death. I looked at her, I said, oh my goodness. I like, is this gonna be the rest of our life? We're gonna be going to doctor appointments together? 
like a date. Man, it, I'm be honest with you. It's stuff you take for granted. Yeah. Listen, you just a day away. Yeah. Everything you got, you a day away from homelessness. homelessness. You a day away from death. You a day from every, you a day away from that man rap destruction. You a day away from his salvation. So you don't know what a day will bring. You don't know how that man, you'll wake up one day and feel like you're in a place with that man. You wake up and find out you're on the wrong side. Yeah. Can you imagine? And that bad, you wake up on the wrong side. That man. That's a bad place to be called. That's a place you can't get out unless he'll let. That's a place, the only way we can get ourselves to where we need to be. A lot of us, I, I consider, I have been an enemy of Yahuwah. Um, you, you know, we don't typically think, I let them finish this. Come, come on, I want to hold y'all up down there. You hold with them. Do something different. Those that are able. I be new. Our Father, we humbly submit ourselves unto you that you will, according to your will, allow us to be your people. Allow us to break away from a mindset of years that we've lingered, we procrastinated. We marginalize our disobedience and our dissatisfaction towards you as though it was nothing. We marginalize our katah and we maximize the violation of others. When we saw their katah, we said, surely they were your enemies. When we saw them serving, she called you contrary. We said, surely a dead destruction is coming upon them. We never, ever saw ourselves as a people fitted for your wrath because of our disobedience. We come before you most, Kudashaba, who is our Shaddai, who is Abir. We confess before you that we have gone wrong and we have fallen short, not only as a GUI, a nation, but as individuals. If we sat and we watched and we did not speak, we were guilty. If we did not call it to the or when we saw it contrary, then surely we're guilty. How do for this hour a time you've given us for reconciliation? Not only us, but our, our both, the fathers, the benim, our children, the seeds of whom you declared because you are hard, the abo, you love the fathers. You chose their benim and you set your affection you're yet sure upon us. I do. Thanks. All the two now. To the Shem of Yahushua, HaMashiach, who is Gadol, who is great above all, who is truly our Malak, our Emperor. Let him shout over us. For surely he is our Nashi, which our Prince, the one you said to rule us, to recover us, to bring us back unto you, as Rehoboam sought to return Yasharal back into their stead. We repent for thoughts, actions, ideals, self-wills, murmuring, grumbling, complaining, hatred, backbiting, lusting, adultery, fornication, theft, murders, whatever it be, even the blasphemy against your will, against your shim against the bent of Yahushua HaMashiach, not always spoken, but in our actions. Allow us to be able to indulge in your debar, your word, not for our self-glory, but for our repentance, for our recovery, for our healing, for our establishing as a gui, as a rosh pari, a first fruit, that you will receive into your alarm habitation Seal us with the Ruach HaKadosh, granting us the Bina, the Da'ath, and the Kagma. As we prepare to move further, we pull out that you take full control, that you get the Kabu, the glory, the Kabad, the honor, the Tahalim, the praise. In the Shem of Yahushua, HaMashiach, let us all say, Amen. 
got to do something different. If we're going to make it in, think about it. How long we've had to be us. You hit a dead on the head all our life. That's why change got to happen. Can't continue to be ourselves any longer. Um, that's what I consider. A lot of times, you know, just like we learned um, in the fifth chapter of the book of uh, Uyakro, he told he said, when you come to know of it, whether you hadn't known it, he says, Kata. It's a lot of things we've done that he kept from us. Well, let me say, and it's been, and it's been because of our, been because of our own will. And <clears throat> hadn't even known we had her locked in disobedience. You know, you'll see it, you'll think, let's see. I ain't been committing adultery, I ain't smoking and drinking, I ain't like telling no lies to hurt nobody. And realize you deceived. You deceived. And that's what we've been in a state of denial. And I appreciate you Hua, for uh, getting us to the point to realize it and consider our latter end. Um, the word has definitely changed, the direction has changed, not of me, but um, it's been purpose that we all um, can get opportunity to really look at where we are and look at where we need to be. And, 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 and you need to be able to see that mirror. That's what the word is for. It gives us that opportunity to be able to see ourselves and see just how far you are and see where you need to be so then you can make preparation. And um, that's what we've been trying to do. Uh, we, we've been doing it, so we thought. But um, it's just like he told us. I, I, I don't know how many times I stayed. He said, turn and take your journey, for you've been in this way too long. In your mind, of course, you always feel like you're doing it. Um, and that's the part that's scary. He can allow you to believe and to think something, and it be the complete opposite. And I appreciate him for just bringing that to mind, to consider that, to... Um, to look at that and then consider your latter end. That's something I, I, I think on. I tell y'all that a lot of times I might try to say, consider your latter end. Um, um, he told you better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Sometimes we consider the beginning and we faint or we feel like that's the end. Consider your latter end. Yeah. Even he told you about when it came down to the, um, the, uh, the ones that watch over you. He told you by uh, remember them that have spoken to you, the Debar Alahim, who's Amanin, who Amana follow, considering the end of their conversation. And um, that's sometimes what you have to look at. The word comes to, like I said, it's better to make the adjustments on this side than to get on the other side and find that you were wrong. That's the only place you can't fix it. Right here, the only place we can fix it. There's nothing you can fix when you die, nothing. You know, I, I just believe in my heart yeah, you know, I, I, you can do that, but I assure you, you're not going to be saved. There's no way you're going to be saved. Um, it, it's, it's, it's so many, um, I don't know. You, you can look at this and feel like you have a mastery of it, and it's just so many different, um, I don't know if we can say di maybe dimensions, because once you, you know, you'll be at a certain place, but you almost transition over to another place to let you see the place where you at really wasn't, and now you're seeing where you can just see where what people thought and what they think. He's saying, you really have no idea. You really have no idea what you're doing. You, you really don't know what you're doing. You really, you really don't consider how in-depth, how strategic this man is. Y'all probably don't need him. There's a lot of stuff. It's, a, it's more what you're thinking. But, you know, it, it's just it, people don't know. And if it's a reason, though, why think about it. Why wouldn't it? Right. A lot of people, for, again, pow, I shoot Canada. What's going to be the question we need to know now? So if you got it, what's your intent? What's your intent when you got it? What's, what you plan on doing? Yeah. That's why he don't even waste his time with a lot of us. I'm being up. What's your intent? Everybody, me. What's your intent? Come on, come on. Who? Somebody give a tell and say, well, I get it. I'm going to misuse it. Where you at? But you are. It's because you're not honest. If you don't use it, the way, and let, me, let me start people thinking, no, I ain't going to misuse it. I ain't going to go out here and try to be no false prophet. I ain't going to go out here and try to manipulate nobody. That's what your mouth's saying, but your behavior will show something different. I'm just telling you, even with Simon, 
Did we know about Simon's heart, his law went right? No. He offered cuff money. He, did he tell him, he said, man, let me buy that man because I ain't right. No. no, he told him. He said, your law not right. He said, you thought this could be purchased with money. He told that man, you're not right in the sight, in the owner, Allahim. He said, you need to palau that Allahim will forgive you for this roshan. That thing hit that man. That man said, man, no, I won't. He said, my heart, he, unlike us. He said, my heart not right. He said, you palau for me. Now, you know what that tell me about him? If there was the intent, we know he said he practiced sorcery. Well, let me ask you a question. According to what we learn now, well, let's see how that works. Let's see how that works. How about that? Yes, let's, let's work this right quick. Let's see how that works. Hey, which way we go there? Ain't that right? Let's let put, let put some shoes on and walk it. Yes, Ain't that right? They're Romans 15 and 4. All right, listen. For whatever Nika taught before. Right, young people, y'all got that. I know y'all hear it all the time. But you do good if you understood it. Don't forget now. For whatever was written before. Nikatab telometers. That's what it was written for to teach us, to show us and to instruct us. For so, what reason? So that through endurance. So in going through without quitting. And through the Nakum of the Kitubin. Or the writing. We might have Tikva. That's going to be it. And all that's depending now on how you use what was written before. How you take it. You know how many times religion told us? Well, you know, that's a non, that's a non, uh, it's uh, no value to us. All that's been done away with. And these people have no idea what they're doing. People have no idea what they've done. We, you know, I'm just telling you, he told me before, he said they're making, the they're, they're making one thing small and made another thing great. Isn't that right? You know, see, listen, you devalue some things, you make something greater. And it's dangerous because you're dealing with something that you got to have an understanding. Even with me, let me tell you. <clears throat> I try to be careful because if you, what, what you have to do when you're dealing with the Torah, you got to make sure that you don't go back and reaffirm something that's already transitioned over. But you need to go back and you need to learn it so you can see how it transitioned to the next level. What some people have done is they've gone through and said, well, we don't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore. That's what they typically do. That's their fight. We don't do that anymore. But why? Because he died. And a lot of times they had understood how things have transformed and how things transition and how things happen. And for us, um, we're trying to make sure that we get a completeness. You gotta remember, we all got to come up and meet with some people that walk through this book. Mm -hmm. Now, you gotta meet these and you think you're just gonna get here and this is just gonna be it. There has to be some labor. So we're going back to look at this and to understand that what we're doing, we don't have the time they had to put into it and it sit as long as they sat into it. So we got to do as he told him in the 11th chapter of the book of Yeshua, we got to be of a quick understanding. Now he told me he got to, he said he got to be of a quick understanding. We should spend a lot of time with them people, teaching them. Took a long time with those people. He said, watch this boy, he's going to be of a quick understanding. That's what he told him. He said, watch him. The rule going to be, he's going to be of a quick understanding. Y'all got to pick this up quick, you ain't going to make it. It's almost like street hustling. You don't pick it up, you ain't going to make it. I'm telling you what you do, is like you'll find a guy, they be on the street, you start out like just selling dimes, you know what I'm saying, pushing them. They pop up, they'll show their hand, they'll show too much. Some people don't watch it, they'll snatch it. You pull it, you show them too many. Everything I do got to be quick. I can't give you the opportunity to choose, I got to give it to you. The time you playing him, looking, trying to figure out which one, first of all, if the police are here, I got to worry about other people trying to jack me, and I got to worry about whether you'll snatch them. And I'll put out a bag full of dime, what you want? So I tell you, you can't allow, and this is what happened with us. We don't have too long to sit around and pick what we want to do. You can't give people that much time. We got to move quicker. Got to tell you, this is what you got. That's why he told them they can't. He said, whatever judgment they give you, let's go ahead. Yeah. That's what you go with. What judgment they give you, take, take that. Because you give people, it take them too long. Why, listen, later on, we found out with uh, all y'all who, what he want to know? How long? He, 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 he want to know how long? Because, you know, they had to, they had to, when you got all these choices, you can do that. How long are you going to hop between two? So a lot of times you got to start, when they came up, they were looking when they all had ball in their head, Yahuwah. He's like, it's a, how long? They kept trying to decide who is who. He said, how long? Right. When he showed himself, let him be all of him. Right. All of him done showed himself, how long are we going to keep home between two opinions? Right. And, and, and we started to procrastinate too long. It, at the end of the day, this whole thing has to work out to our salvation. 
So it's really imperative that we're going through him, we look at it, we're really kind of considering what we're doing. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it, it's really a pressing way, pressing more than what we thought about and how we seen things. And now we're trying to come back and we're trying to assess again and see exactly how we got to these points and what happened, what did we miss? Because you, 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 you kind of figure, when he came into contact with people, these people received the Royal Hakadosh, or people received their deliverance. People received their deliverance upon him, uh, upon meeting him, upon conversations with him. A lot of things happen to these people quickly. And so what we've done when we were Christians, and people, let's go with this, everybody's still Christian. You're still a Christian to the, to the fact of the way we, we kind of believe things. We don't put a whole lot of value back on his previous writings. The, the antics of Christianity puts more credence on what he said now. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the day, and I'm looking at the day. How did you get to the day? Because when he started in Barashi, he started counting the day. When they got to the rest, how did they get to the rest? They walked straight to the rest. No, he said that they came from darkness. How high got to the seventh? How I got to Shabbat? He started counting from the first. He said, I came first. It was darkness. Represented. It was sin when I came. And I found out people, it was sin. Wasn't that operating? And I set an operation up, and it went through all of these things, all of these different sets, all these different occurrences, till it got to a point that I said, now it can rest. Look at it, come unto me, all that burden and heavy laden. These people jump straight to the finish line. Look at what these people, look what happened. This man called us a lot of things that happened before he got to the point of saying, this is the rest. <clears throat> this is the rest. But it all came through what? Everything complied and followed. You did one thing. He ain't even done that correctly. And here you are already saved. Ready to go there. It don't make sense. It was so much working to get to that point. You got what I'm saying? And now we're trying to go back and trying to really encompass that understanding. Understand it. I want that connection. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest, we devalue those people a lot. When you ain't paid attention, there's a lot of things they've done that you really kind of follow the same patterns of that you need to know, that you didn't pay attention to. You really didn't. I know you didn't. You know how I know you didn't? Because you couldn't know they ain't taught it to you. That's a lot of stuff you didn't know that you got to do that they did, that people ran with. And the people who ran with and said they did it, they don't know what they done. And they can tell you how they did it. I don't know how now. I just know it happened. I know it. That's, that's the problem. That's the problem. These are what you call these freak occurrences. He has no freak occurrence. Everything that occurred the way he told them. When he, what that mean when they said, surely he does nothing except he reveal it? What that mean? What the world that he done done something? Ain't know nothing about it. You know what I just told you? I'm not one of his. Because he said he don't do nothing except he reveal it to him. See, so now I need to be in a relationship. I need to be relationship minded. Y'all got what I'm saying? And this, these are things we miss because if that's the case, then I need to make sure I create this relationship, I'm not fabricated. I need to make sure it's predicated on something so I can make sure it's founded. You need to be assured of it. So a lot of stuff you're not sure about and, that, and, that's, and that's something we gotta do. We, you need to be assured of it. There's patterns, you know what I'm saying? At the mouth of two or three witnesses. Yeah, a lot of time you'll watch, you'll tell Musha something and repeat that, it, that he did it. You'll say, well, you said, because you, you, cause you miss a pattern. You're waiting <clears> to hear somebody else say it. Right. You know what I'm saying? When he told Roboham, when he told him, when the young man told him what the council was, right. and they went back up and they let you know, he told you, said, really? He just said, I was good. I could just went on here and just say he told him. So no, you need to know he repeated what he said because he didn't let you know that the thing was confirmed. Because you said it was from me, remember? Yes, sir. So that's why you need to know that. But see, it, you know what happened with us sometimes? I mean, I ain't worried about that because I, I believed it anyway. And guess what happened? That's a violation because you shouldn't have believed it. Because, see, you broke protocol. Yeah. He ain't got to do nothing for me. He ain't got to show me nothing. I believe it. So let me get this straight. So he started in Barashit. Before he put you in, he made sure there were odds here. You needed some things that signified things. And now you come along and you don't need nothing to signify nothing. He said, that's, that's, that's crazy. That's really crazy. Because I set these up for a reason. Because I needed you to believe a certain type of way. It's, it's structured. But because we'll get to going, we'll get comfortable. I don't want to believe nothing about what I'm, what I'm trying to go back and do. And I believe it's of Yahuwah. Is to make sure what it is I believe 
Aman is because it is written. Y'all got it? it it's, 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 it's really crucial that we make sure of that because this is the thing. I, I got such a relationship with him. I just, I just learned to just believe anyway. You shouldn't. Right, right. Because you're breaking protocol. And because of that, you'll also break away. Because it makes no, whatever he gave you, it's important that it stays that way. You got what I'm saying? Don't break the same way. You know what I'm saying? The same time, I know, don't, you're not saving him no time. He already know about time. You know what I'm saying? He's the measure of time. Mm -hmm. You know, he control time whether it go forward or go backwards or stand still. So you're not helping him with no time. Y'all got what I'm saying? That's the problem. We keep thinking we're assisting him when you're not assisting, you're actually hurting. So, um, having said all that, it, it's, it's, that's where I'm at. Y'all need to know where I'm at and, and why I, I've taken, well, again, well, let's say, I don't say why I've taken the route or the approach. I say why it's been laid upon me, um, pressed upon me to kind of take the directions of looking at, clean up stuff. Just, just getting rid of stuff, moving stuff out the way, getting rid of stuff, making sure we understand things, making sure we look at things and realize don't get too settled in something because now everything is being tested and tried. Like even with preachers, politicians, and I never seen a day or time where so many people went on prosecution. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's, listen, it's bad. They just, um, they just exposed a sex ring yesterday, day for yesterday. Politicians and high ranking Military people caught in it, six hundred dollars an hour. Oh, this, yeah, this. All them fighting to keep their name. They just exposed it. They got paying like thirty-six hundred dollars, six hundred dollars an hour, and they all fighting to keep their names out because they finna go public on them. See, just when you think it's one thing, he listen. But guess what? Everybody work got to be tried. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, he told you that. He said every man work gonna be tried by fire. Right. He said that's all. I don't even gonna see what sort it's of. Right. My work got to be tried too. Your work got to be tried. Don't, he not, listen, he not exempt, ain't nobody exempt. But we've gotten comfortable and we felt like the Yoon ain't approaching when the hour was near. Yeah, yes sir. The hour was near, it's, it's near than when you first believed. That's right. And now we gotta really set back and we gotta start to consider how we've looked at things, how we've um, took things. And we took a lot of things for granted. I, I say for myself and I know we did because the leader has the imprint or uh, press upon the people and you kind of follow. Uh, and it's things that I did not consider to that end. And I think with um, those days he had me to, to sit down, I couldn't, I couldn't move, I couldn't do nothing. It did a lot for me. It did a lot for me and I appreciate it. You know, sometimes, this is what happens with some people, you'll go through something, it, don't, it ain't a benefit to you. It's just like he said, all things work together. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't do nothing, I couldn't even wipe myself, I couldn't do nothing. That really put me in, but you know what? You have to see yourself out of, but I didn't give up on him. I didn't give up on him. I knew it was a reason. I said, I know it's a reason. I just don't know why at the time. It's a reason why you got me like that. He let me know, you have to set this in order. It's that quick I move and let you sit here and you have, and you have no ability of your own. You know, it, it just show how quick, how easy stuff you take for granted. It's like you taking a lot for granted. You take, you taking a lot from it. Listen, you de, you did a lot of depending on yourself. I think you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. It's, it's your who will. It's your who will to make sure we get this thing right. If I had to remove any of y'all, remind. Listen, make no mistake. Any one of y'all, it made me no different. Listen, I have. I will sleep the same. I will continue to keep moving. At the end of the day, we all have to make choices. This is your salvation. I'm only here for one reason: that to make sure we get that right. We include me. To get that right, I will not let you and whatever your hangers are keep us from getting there. Don't put them people up on that camera for, for a second, please. Y'all understand me? Can y'all hear me up there? This is a self journey. And make sure everybody we got it now. It's a self journey. Everybody got to make up their mind what they're gonna do at the end of the day. This this our soul, and you and you will you should want somebody to care about you as much as you do. Because this, this is what, this is beyond it. Even as a sinner, committing could talk, could um, I never wanted to, to die and burn and go to Sheol. People don't want to do that. It's just sometimes you can get so um, embarked, uh, just kind of get in a lot with so many different things before you know it, you just find yourself, I mean, 
it don't seem practical. It don't seem like it's something that you're capable of doing. And life has a way of putting you out. So sometimes you, the further you get, the more you'll get to put the will, just put it out of your mind. At that point, you know, eh, you know, I, I, I just, I'm just trying to stay focused. I'm just trying to make sure I do. I'm just trying to just still just do right though, even ain't doing what he said. You know how retarded it may sound? Only right it is, it is right. He the only person that declare right. That's just being honest, but you know what we say? I might not be going, I might not be doing, but I, I try to do right. You can't try to do right. You can only do right. There is no such thing as trying to do right. you either doing, if I'm trying to do right, what am I doing? See, how many people say that? How many people say, I'm, I'm doing, because they don't want to say that. They said, no, I mean, yeah, but, but I'm trying. You're not trying, you're doing wrong. And see, in your conversation, you don't realize you said something that you didn't realize you said because you're not practical. You're not, re you're not being logical, realizing you're not trying to do right. You're doing wrong. I try to be good. So what am I? That's the only way I could be trying to be good is that I'm bad. And you know what? How many of y'all think of hearing this thinking now? That makes sense. But think about it. Did we ever put that in our minds like that? No, because if I'm trying to do good or I'm trying to stop, then I'm doing something. I'm still going. I'm trying to stop. That means I'm still going. See, all of these are things that we say, but it appeases the hearer and appease us to say, I'm not really I'm that bad. See, all this, you start marginalizing and you maximize other people's stuff. You see a man arrested for kidnapping three kids, raping them. That bastard need to die. Oh, so that's interesting. That's interesting. Why? Because of what he did is wrong. <laughs> he said, what you're doing is wrong. I mean, but I ain't, I ain't like I'm out here kidnapping no kids and killing no kids. He said, I don't know how you figure that. In my, in my own, you are. Because I agree all y'all the same. He's just amazing how you see these people as these bad, terrible people and don't see yourself. And that's what we're trying to come back to correct. That when we're putting out this condemnation, that we're being fair enough to look at first, let's make sure where we are. They make the proper correction measurement for ourselves. What we want for ourselves, we should want for other people. I'm going to tell you something hard for me to do. Um, forgive your enemy. Pray to forgive your enemy. That, that you, I said it, but that, that's not, it wasn't practical at the first. It wasn't practical. It wasn't practical. I'm just being honest. Y'all want the truth or you want to lie? Mm -hmm. Wasn't practical. You can say it though. He, he let me know you can recite words, but that's not really what you meant. Mm -hmm. You said it because you know that's what I wanted to hear you say. And that's exactly what I did. I said, well, I'll say it, then it'll start to work into getting. It didn't. You have to really adjust yourself to realize, first of all, how do you view me? When I said, how do you view me? I had to look at how does he view me? And I had to learn from him. I view you as an enemy. I view you as the worst person. That's how I view you. Now, what do you think I should happen? What should happen to you? I feel like you ought to forgive me. How do you view the people that you say your enemies? I view them as terrible people, worst people, and I think that they should die. He said, then that's the same thing should happen to you. Although you're saying save you, Although you're saying forgive you, that's not the way you feel about them. So I wasn't being practical. See, don't, don't lie to yourself. It'll only hurt you later. It'll hurt because it's going to come up. Listen, the same measurement that you measure off other people, he said, that's what you're going to get now. You, it's easy to see other people that do things against you as these type of people, but you can't see yourself. So I had to see myself in order to be practical when I say, Forgive them. And you know, sometimes, and this, this is my thinking. Well, this is my thinking. Y'all don't want, do y'all want to know what I thought? Yes, sir. Well, maybe you do that. Maybe then they'll move on and leave you alone. They still bother. And you know what you still got to do? Yeah. Still got to forgive them. Because you're seeking something for yourself. And in order for me, when I plow to get to a more honest, honest state, honest in when I'm asking for something, I'm asking genuinely, earnest, with the most serious state of mind, was to see my situation. Was for me to see me and look at how 
and practical it was to desire something of him that I couldn't do for somebody else. It's not practical. It's not practical for you to ask for salvation, deliverance from, and you can't see somebody else getting it that does something to you when you were the offender to him and he forgave you. How y- y'all understand that? You can say it and let the words loose from, loose from your mouth, but it got to come from him. There's a conversation that'll come from him. There's one that come from him. Y'all got, there's one that's got to come from him. Not above. He don't want above now. Above is when you're dealing with people to get past your feelings and your ideology. When it comes to forgiving people, that needs to come from the heart. See, they'll try to trick that. Well, I mean, I forgive you above my, I don't know. No, you can see, that's when, we, that's when you're not understanding. Now we're dealing with nature. Her man said nature. Now we deal with the natural. Now when you forgive, it's got to come from here. It's got to come from the literal heart, the literal interbeing workings of self forgiveness. That's something that's hard for us to do. Y'all got it? I'm, I'm on this pathway to salvation is a lot more deeper than what we perceived. And now we're trying to come back and become more comprehensive about it and look at it. it, it it's a lot of details that, um, that you'll miss and you'll get. And I, and I, I guess what I come to uh, realize is um, how much I play a part, how much you play a part on how much information that you'll get and what you'll say. Because he can only give you so much based upon where you at. Based on where you at, based on how well you perform, based off of how responsible you are, how consistent you are, it's going to play the part of what he going to give you. Look at Mushal. When he brought them out, you know what we learned about Mushal? So he was the meekest man in the whole, whole alarm. You know where we learned that from? Yahushua. He saw that man. This man used to be the second, one of the second highest rulers in Misraim. This man sat and broke himself down from that position. To hump, unlike us, you know what I'm saying? One day, Boston, the Lord came in my life. I, I was lifted up. I, I was up high. I had everything. And then God, then God knocked me down like it did Paul off my heart. So I don't know where they got it. Say beast, but anyway. Shout the name. I'm just, you know, using the antics. With him, nobody knocked him down. The book told us that he looked on the affliction. Nobody knocked him from nowhere. He made a self-choice. You know, he looked at that's 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 humility. The fact that that man would listen, no, nobody took, he could tell you just like Yahushua said about nobody. Who took Yahushua's life? He, and you ain't gonna believe it. Mushad, ain't nobody took my position. I laid it down. And he laid it down and he could pick and he got to pick it back up too. See, a lot of us got the story of Something happened. Something knocked me down. I was on my sick bed one day. I was about to die. The doctor said I had about an hour, about two hours a week. I, and God started. You see, I'm, and I mean, that's fine. Please don't think I'm saying that there are not people that don't have real life situations that, um, that agitate them to a point to become more aggressive towards seeking. But then here's a man that just looked out and just saw the affliction. Here's a man that walked out on his own. Here's a man that went and put himself in between some guys. He sat here and watched a man being smoked, almost about to be killed. And you know, he looked in his head. Nobody's going to do nothing. You know them two guys up on the two. Those guys never did nothing for you. They were over you too. And he looked one way and he looked the other way. And he saw nobody did nothing. He ain't going to believe it. That's what he did. He did himself. So um, I would rather, I would like to be able and willing to humbly do it without having to be stricken. However, get it. If, like, if it worked in my salvation, I'd take it. But I'm just telling you, consider a man like that. A man that t- who took it upon himself. Not nobody coming. Come on, man. Come on, man. You are gonna keep sick, man? Come on, man. Go on, do it. He said, "Why didn't nobody do that to me?" He said, I, "He looked out and saw the affliction of the people. He took it upon himself. You ain't gonna believe it. And for that cause, 
He wanted Shane to call us our king. That's what you find by Yahushua. But you didn't believe it. Musha did it first. He looked, and he wanted Shane to call you our king. He, he associated himself. See, when you hear that about Yahushua, you really don't know what you're doing unless you actually understand Musha. You had to understand a man who willingly did it. When Yahushua told you I willingly gave up what I got, you should consider that nobody, he said, nobody made me do this. He said, I did this on myself. I had to, listen, it was in my power to do what I wanted to do. And I chose to give it up to come down here with you. So now that makes me look at a man and say, what man of man is this? How many people would do it? I think the fifth chapter of the book of uh, Romans, it talked about scarcely for a righteous man but one time, pre-adventure for a good man. But while we were, let me see, say, feel with sinners, Katane, what did he do? He moved. When they was in captivity, it was, it was uh, equivalent to being in sin. That's what sin is, captivity. Not being able to perform your own will. You're a sinner. Let me tell you something. I'll help y'all out for a second. If there's a behavior that you manifest that can share the word to the debunk and you're told not to do it, you are a sinner. Okay? You ain't got to go tell no lie. You ain't got to go drink no liquor. You ain't got to go lust at no, no vagina, no breasts, no penis. All you have to be to done is told to do something, instructed in something, and don't do it. You, ma'am, you saw are a sinner because you don't have the will. You don't have the power to overcome. See, that's what Yahushua did. He saw that you were oppressed. He saw that you was oppressed. You can't break the will. That's the purpose of why he sets now. He has the overpower. He's overtaken. So you will be able to be able to obtain something that you didn't have the power to do. Right. You remember how, to give you an example, you remember how the people, um, how they fought their way out of Mizraim? So what happened? Is that a different version? So how did they get out? And, 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 and why you think he brought them out? Because you were without strength. <laughs> you, you were without strength. How exactly was you going to do it? Exactly. So they understood what it was like to be up on a test map, be without control. That's why it's so important. He told you in your patient. <laughs> See, he's trying to get you back into a position. But then you have to understand the principal things of how this how the whole thing is set up and how important it is for you to recognize what's done and not just say. I ain't even been back there. He says, I'm just curious, how did you get that? How did they do the math? How did they do math sometimes? Explain your answer. Um, I just got the answer. He said, no, I need you to explain to me how did you get it. This is a problem. This is a problem. And guess what? It's a problem with you trying to explain to me and get past him and get him to understand. How exactly did you get it? Ah, there we go. So let's um, let's see how that worked out. Mm, 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 mm. Let's look at something. How about that? Mm, 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 mm. Oh. I'll mess with the thing we're gonna write. So let me see that. Uh, maybe we'll work a different way. Let's see something. Let's look at the book of Matthew. Twelve. Let's see thirty. Let's see where they go. How about that? <clears throat> y'all know y'all how to work with me now. It be hard for me to remember stuff sometimes. Listen. <laughs> Everyone who is not for me is against me. Mm. That's what he told her. Everybody, he said, that's not against him is. You know what Will Pretty say? Everybody who with me is with me. <laughs> that's pretty much Will said. He just told that way. He said, everyone who is not for me is not for me is against me. It's, that's something that. Listen what happened. And whoever does not gather with me. And whoever don't gather with me. Scatters. He said, that's what you're doing. <clears throat> Well, he's doing his thing and I'm doing my thing. He said, then you're against me. Right. 
because you're not gathering with me. See, he put it to where people go, why? It was, it was easy to pay attention to these people to try to see. Y'all got it? This, see, for them, how things work for them, even just, just thinking of that, um, in the book of Root, you have to go and get it. When it come down to Naomi and, and um, what's her mother-in-law name? Root, well, Naomi was the mother-in-law Root. If you remember, they went and they started to gather. And they started to gather, she gathered with them to the side. They started to cast her song she would gather. He had them to just leave her song that she could gather with them. So these people had a principle of understanding. Although she was of another gui, she gathered with them. When they went in the field together, so did she. She gathered with them. And they understood that how they gathered. They looked, if you ain't gathering with me, then you actually scattering. Because you're not helping. You're allowing things to get outside of what the measurements are already, what the standards are already been um, set for us to do. Okay? Let's see. Therefore, I say to you. What you say? Every kata or blasphemy shall be forgiven to Anashim. You hear that? Every form of blasphemy. What, what, can we look up what blasphemy? Y'all know what blasphemy is, right? Don't we? Let's see what blasphemy is. It's the act. The act or offense of speaking sacrilegiously about Elohim or sacred things, profane talk. When he told you about you're not supposed to revile the rule of your people, that's a form of blasphemy. That's, this is the, it's the act or offense of speaking sacrilegiously about Elohim or sacred things, profane talk. These are things we try to look at, we try to consider. There's a lot of things we've done over the course of time, over years, we hadn't really measured out and looked at the effect of it and how he's actually measured it because you don't even know a lot of times you've done it. Hello? And look up sacrilegious. Sacrilegious. <clears throat> oh, involving or committing sacrilege. Let's look at sacrilege, yeah. Violation or misuse of what is regarded as sacred. Sacred. So a lot of times people looked at that and they put a lot of, like they talked against the Mashkan or people would talk against the altar or different things like that. And then Yahushua had to come back and let us start knowing <clears throat> what made things to be that we hold or we held to be um, <clears throat> precious or something that we looked at holding to be value. They put a lot against the altar, but then he come back to let them know which was greater. Was it the altar or what was offered on the altar? A lot of times they didn't pay attention. They thought that just the altar itself carried so much weight and value. He said, but what we offered on the altar is what he received. See, the, offer, the altar was just the place. Even when, um, when the Isha Alahim came out, he cried out against them about the altar. He let them know that Alahim was going to put them on that altar. And he was going to sacrifice them right there on that altar. He was going to burn their bones right there. Because it was what was offered on the altar, what was what was we really set the value. The altar was just a place that we set aside to where we came and we did, just like the building. People look at there's a certain reverence we get to the building, but all this correlates over to the type of behavior we should have inside ourselves. There should be a discipline with us and our behavior. But you had to first learn how to value the building. Y'all got him? How you value the things that he sat down and he, and he regulated those things, how they should be done and how things should be kept in the order and the fashion of them. Then we came back to learn, he says you. He let you learn that and let you know how to regard that. And he came and he struck you down and he killed you. He punished you when you didn't keep it to get you to understand the value of, let me say, pick me up at 1 Corinthians right quick, 3 and 17. Let's see, three and fifth, three, three and fourteen. Let me see what it says. First Corinthians, three and fourteen. Let's see the one. All right, listen. If his work is burned up, he shall suffer loss. Oh, what verse that is? Fifteen. Okay. All right, make it fourteen. Yes, sir. All right. First Corinthians three, fourteen. Listen. If any each work which he has built on it remains, he shall receive a reward. You see that? That's what we're trying to do. 
He said, if a man work, if it remain, he said he'll receive a reward. What happened? If his work is burned up. If his work is burned up. He shall suffer loss. See that? He's going to suffer loss. But listen what happened. But he himself shall be saved. Look at Eu. They burned out his house. And you see how he went to Sheol? He was still saved. That's right. See, because they're going to think. They're going to mess up. See, he had to write it like that because so many people, they don't, they don't catch on. See, it's used to determine things as well. And it's also deter it also allows you to realize there are happenings that happen so Yahuwah can try to show them how it works. Because a lot of times people think they got him pegged down. That's how they lose him. Think about it. If your stuff burned out, it couldn't burn out only because you, you had to be Roshan, right? That's what, that what EU friends tried to tell him. But we found out that later on that EU was perfect and upright. And he received double. But what you do? Soon as something happened, what you do? Faint. And you don't even realize, I'm just trying your work. If, you, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, guess how it's going to work itself out? All things. But you don't let it happen like that. Because you don't understand, you don't understand the work of Elohim. So the first thing you do is you faint. What else you do? Hello? Come on. Just like when you seen with Pharaoh, what took Pharaoh out? The young. Exactly right. What we'll call that? How to overtake him? How did it overtake him? Drowning. What we'll call it drowning. How it came in over him? Like a flood. Like a flood. What your book said that when the enemy come in like a flood, he said the standing of you who are going to be lifted up against you. So as soon as you see the flood, you drown for you, and you go ahead and kill yourself for you and see you who are standing get lifted. See? That's why I'm saying you'll hear something, that's why you gotta be taught. Because every time you see, you don't know what you do, you faint. You run another different direction. You try something else. Thinking you you think you're getting out of something. Let, let the will of you who will be done. It'll work out for you. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, it's gonna work itself out. I guarantee, you, just do what you're supposed to do. That's why he told him to go in the vineyard and work. And what he told him? Make sure you keep up. Just make sure you keep up. Don't forget to tell me what you did. He said, you, he said what's right on my pad? He said, man, I want to hear seen this. I, I did. And also I did this. And I, I want to hear He Listen, what's right? He said, I'm going to pay it. Why you keep not wanting to know? Did he, he knows. I told, you, I told you to do the work. Why would I not know what I got to pay you? People have no idea because we don't trust him. These are things I'm telling you. These are things I found about myself. We trust him to a degree, but never fully. Because you always got to leave that room to where if something else don't happen, I got to be ready to do something else. We still got hustle mode on. You got to have more than one thing. Having more than one thing going is good out here. Having more than one thing going over your hood is dangerous. Because that doesn't go with singleness of mind, singleness of see that's when we mess up. Let me tell you where our fault come in at. We met look at the uh, what they call the virtuous woman, Kyle. When you look at her, now she made stuff, she sold as well, and she sold stuff to the merchants. And she bought a field a field of plant. So now she was versatile. Will we not agree? But when it come down to serving your hood, you gotta be singleness. You can't hear your hood thing and do your own thing. This is stuff y'all mess up. Stand still and see. You know what I'm saying? Be more ready to hear than to get a sacrifice. But you, these are things you see, these are violated because this is what calls, and this is sin. I'm trying to help y'all to know what sin is. You're great in sin on, oh, I ain't like I ain't keeping Shabbat. Your Shabbat is void. It's, it's not even valid. See, once you commit a talk, it ain't even, you ain't even kept it. It's because, okay, what, let, let me get it straight. The keeping of Shabbat is rest. That's not doing your own thing. So if you're being taught that you're doing your own thing at the same time, how are you keeping Shabbat? I made this for you. See, you, you violated it and you don't even realize it because in your mind, I ain't like I went to work. Like he said, you are doing it because you're working the work I ain't gave you. I try to help y'all. It's so many violations, man. Listen, he want to go about violate in our own eye. This is the problem with all of us. That screen in him, all of us too. In our mind, we graded ourselves. Mm. That's been the fault. Mm. We grade, yeah, we graded ourselves. Cause ain't like ain't like I'm working. Ain't like I'm out on a track or something driving a load. Ain't like I'm down at the car I sell and car. Ain't like I'm building a house. He said, I know. That's what you said. He said, but you're doing your own thing. Mm. 
So you done, you done already done violated it. See, this is what we got. This is, these are things we have to learn about ourselves. Because who, who been grading us? We have been grading ourselves. We've been grading ourselves. That's how we get off. Anybody here that's gotten off, you've gotten off because you graded yourself. You didn't ask about it. You went off, you did your own thing. And you got, then you come at that child, and you are marginalized when you ask that it ain't to the full capacity of what you've done, but I know it's deeper than what you said. But at the same time, we just got to look like, I got to look stupid, and you, and you look stupid. Now, my stupid is the face he gave me. Your stupid is your actions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't we look stupid? <laughs> so we need to get it together. Y'all see what I'm saying? That's why we're here. We're trying to really look at how to get this thing together to be better. That's the whole purpose of why we're here, to get better. Okay? Let's finish this up. First Corinthians chapter three. What verse we at? Fifteen. Fifteen. Let's see what happened. If he work, if his work is burned up. If his work is burned up, he going to Sheol. He shall suffer loss. He gonna suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved. So that tell me right now when something happens. Just say I lose something. That mean I'm going to Sheol. That mean hey, it is. Come on, I gotta be going to Sheol. I can't be right. That why you think? That, why y'all? Why were this read? Who know? Thank y'all for our learning. You see that? Cause what what do we typically do if something going wrong? We can't, thank you, sir. That's what it's thinking. Why, that's why he put this here. Now, properly using it, let me know I can have something go wrong. That don't mean I'm going to Sheol. Mm -hmm. That don't mean he against me. It's because I need you to understand. Listen, another man who don't know is going. Another man who not keeping, he's going. But I set this up because guess what? I have you for a purpose. Just like EU, EU was for a purpose. We have to get out of this. We tend to feel like our life is our own. That's why I try to remind myself, let him know, I'm borrowing. I appreciate what you let me borrow. Borrow keeps you in the mind of, somebody get to say, I'm letting you borrow this. Right. So he don't get to hear me and my pen. <laughs> so you're emphasizing borrow, which means I can come back and get this when I need it. When I want this, I can come back and get it. You're only borrowing this. That's all, just borrowing. But for you to think it's yours, it's a misconception on your end because I never told it was yours. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. So that makes a difference on how we handle and use things and consider your life is not your own. So I'm, I let you borrow it. And I let you borrow it because it's being used for a purpose. It's being used to show something, to demonstrate something. But a lot of times we get kind of side and forget and we get the ownership and we kind of get lax. And before you know it, you, you kind of get off the path. That's the goal of what we're trying to do now, trying to come back and, like I said, realign ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you'll see a car, you'll be surprised, you'll get a new car, that wheel's just like this here. Over time you get it going, that steering wheel like this, that steering wheel like that, that thing like that. But it still drives straight. You need to get a line. Alignment. You know, I seen folks that line up and they get through. They said, I had what? I said, that's the, they said, that's straight is going to get it, buddy. We got a computer right now. I'm just saying, them little jackyard places, they jack <laughs> steel wheel. I said, that, they said, the wheel might not be straight, but I'm telling you, it's straight. We got, you take one of them real places, one of them five stone ones, <laughs> and we'll be just like this here, yep. like fatter. You said, yep. them folks in here and told me, and that's what, that's what you got now. Folks have told you, and, and told you like that, and told you you're straight. You're not straight. Straight, it'd be like this. That's right. It'd be balanced. It'd be That's even. right. But how many y'all had one of them, them jackyard back up, jackyard front end line up? You know, and the wheel been like that. That they say, they say, oh, it's straight. Cause listen, they believe it, you believe it, and you're comfortable with it. When you know when, you, when it first made, they made it like this. Jim Ford and Christ ain't let it left out like that. They ain't let that car left out no steering wheel like that. They know that's not how it's made. It's made like this. Right. But over time. You miss it, you're, you, you know what get like this? Them bumps, stuff, you say, oh shoot. And you get, you say, well, I ain't hurt nothing. You know what I'm saying? You might've hit that curve, but I ain't damaged nothing. And you don't realize Line. you got off. Yeah. No, no, them bumps, yeah. you got off. That wheel didn't just get like this now one day. That wheel, that's every time you've been doing something, and guess what happened? This your life. This your life. And you know what I'm saying? It don't bother me. And, that shit, and that's a problem. It's some people that down. How many of y'all were good with that steering wheel like that once they told you? Nobody was going yeah. to tell you what happened. That's your life. That's your life. All of it, that's your life. 
So you don't realize every time you've been making mistakes, every time you've been doing things, you've been getting off a little bit more and more. So now he come back and said, let's realign this. He talked about, he said, because precept got to be a pun. What was it again? Precept. And line got to be with a pun. Line. You ain't going to believe it. We're going to have to go here, there, and there a little. Right. That's what, so we can get it back aligned. Sometimes they ain't gonna just they ain't gonna just let one thing go. That's a lot of stuff they might take loose on the whatever it takes to get it lined up. Sometimes you might have to modify, you might have to change some things. But this is the problem we have in our minds and the way we see things in our perception. We feel like it don't take all that. We feel like we pretty good. Because basically, you pretty much measure yourself off other people, other religion. And I don't. I don't. I don't use no Hebrew Israelite camps, no Israelite camps, no Aubrey, no Jewish camps. I use none of these people, no I, I assure y'all, I use none of these people for no measuring stick. Absolutely none of them. Absolutely none. That's not an insult to them at the same time. I just don't use them as a, as a measuring stick because that's going to be contrary to what I've been taught. Mm -hmm. He said, we don't judge ourselves by ourselves. In so doing, he said, that's not, not why. Lie. I got a ruler right here. I don't know why you'd be allowing yourself nobody else. You know, there's some other cats do that, and I'm going to run you off as soon as I hear you say it. That's right. Because I ain't going to measure myself by them. There's a lot of things you got to have when you start moving into things. You need to have understanding. Otherwise, you're going to have some preconceived notions. You're going to have some misconceptions. And you know, before you know it, your wheel like this. But it's still straight, though. Then you go on straight like you do doing like going straight. Like they said, David Ryan, we had that meme. They said, they said, they said, they said, preacher. I know about They said, where, where is Dave turning? They said, I said, they like, Dave been turning the whole me. I said, turning? I look at the camera. So I was like, who that's up? Was that Justin? Was that Austin? Was that Austin? He said, man, that man been turning the whole time. I like, I said, Dave, where you turning? They said, preach, I'm going straight. They said, man, they said, straight. They said, they, they, said, they were wrestling like they were that wheel. <laughs> they were spinning that wheel right. He was wrestling and fighting like, he looked like your cold would fight that mile of key. <laughs> he ain't going to let that wheel go to get straight. But no, but they would call it being humans about it. But a lot of times, you know, I had calls like for, you had to, how many of had them where you had to do like this? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're, and, you know, and you know what? But you, but you get what happened. You can be calm. And you, 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 you say, hey, somebody drive your car. They say, man, man, that, man, you need to get your, you were like, what's wrong? They like, man, that thing was all over the road. They like, think about it. Because you know what? When somebody else get to see it, who's used to something going straight, they notice it. You don't notice it because you know what? You've been weaving so long. You've been assuming you've been going straight. And that's how we look at now. These are all natural things we know, not spiritual. Think of how, they, think of how we've been doing them to come there. Because soon we get to something <laughs> and we look at, oh, yeah, 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 and trying to show, show we're still straight. You just got to do like this. And you still be, I'm, I'm good. I mean, I can, I can do it with one hand. <laughs> and that, that's your justification. I can do it with one hand. You're like, but you're going straight. What is all this you're doing? And, and that's the problem, because you're not going straight. And now we're trying to come back. And just even with that, they got lines. And you know what? You inside the line, this him. Basically, you inside the line, turn it, and still straight inside the line. We're trying to line this thing up the way he told us to do it. That makes sense. Yeah. Let's finish this up right quick. It's got to be a purpose. Listen. Well, he himself shall be Hold on for a He himself need to turn that mic on. <laughs> that man just read. Ain't got no mic on like them folk can hear him. What happened? But he himself shall be saved. But he himself shall be saved. But like a shadow from fire. Like, but like a shadow from fire. I don't know how that works, but go ahead. Do you not know that you are a mashakan of Allahim? He said, did you know that? Well, he put Hakil. Hakil, not mashakan. He, Hakil. They're both kind of flowers. I think the, the mashakan is more into the sacred place. The, the Hakil is more like the temple. Because you got the most sacred inner workings of it, then you just got the building structure itself. So now he's talking about you being Hakil, which is you being what they would call a temple. What happened? And that the Ruach of Elohim dwells within you. You ain't going to believe it. He said the Ruach of Elohim, it's, it dwells in you. What happened? And in each that destroys the Hakil of Elohim. You ain't going to believe that. A man that go and desecrate this, this, a man that go and commit, go and commit blasphemy against this, you ain't gonna believe it. What'd he do? The Elohim shall destroy him. How you know that, how they understood that? When he came, he took down Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a sacred place. It was a sacred place. And they violated it. And you ain't gonna believe what Yahuwah did. He destroyed them. That's why he destroyed them. Not when y'all went and put it back, you ain't gonna believe how the building got tore up. Who know how? By fire. So what did they suffer? 
And some of the people made it out. You ain't going to believe it. And they were saved. To what you know, you have to know about the tour room. He destroyed it. And you know how you let them know? Because they violated it. See, this is what we, you don't look at a violation the way I look at it. Y'all got it? Looking at a file, looking at how things actually work. We told you missed. You missed. So now we're coming back to try to get a better understanding of these concepts because we missed it. So he let them know when a the man do that. Let's go back to that 12th chapter right quick, the book of Matthew Yahoo. 12, what we at? 31, 32? Y'all got to help me remember now. 12, 31, 32. Matthew 31. 31. All right, listen. Therefore, I say to you, Therefore, I every, say to you, every kata or blasphemy shall be forgiven to Anashim. You hear that? He said every one of them shall be forgiven, man. Mm -hmm. But blasphemy against the Ruach shall not be forgiven to Anashim. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? Blasphemy against the Ruach, he shall not be forgiven. What happened? And whoever speaks of the bar. And it's conjunction, correct? They kind of put it in. Listen. And whoever speaks of the bar of disgrace against the Ben of Adam. You hear that? Whoever speaks one against the Ben of Adam. Listen. It shall be forgiven to him. He said that'll be forgiven him. But whoever insults the Ruach HaKadosh. That's another violation. He said, but whoever insults the Ruach HaKadosh. What happened? It shall not be forgiven to him. That's what he said. He said that one right there won't be forgiven him. That won't be forgiven. Now, those are things we have to look at, we have to try to consider. He said there are violations that he said, I can forgive you for a violation. He said, I can't forgive you for. Now, I know what you're thinking. I ain't never talked against the Holy Ghost. I mean, I mean, the, the Ruach, what they call it, the Spirit. And that's what we're probably looking at, right? I'm sure. Let's look at the sixth chapter book of Abari. Abari, they call Hebrew. The reason they call it Hebrew because nobody else brewed it. He did it himself. Abari or Abari, six and one. This don't write anymore. I'm gonna make sure I get rid of it today. <coughs> Remember later. Y'all need to slide down. You good? What y'all need to do? Oh no, I'm just. Mm-hmm. I put it right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, appreciate it. Let's take it right now. All right, listen. Therefore, now having left the beginning of the Dabarim of the Mashiach. Now having did what? Left the beginning uh -huh. of the Dabarim the of the Mashiach. So left in the start. Come on. Let us go on to perfection. That's what he said. That where was you supposed to go when you stopped there now? Now having left the starting line, you should be going on to perfection. I don't know how you start out for perfection when he said you had to start at the beginning. That's right. So they left the beginning. That's how they got the How did you get the perfection? You didn't even start at the beginning. That's right. I'm just curious how that worked. How that worked? So I know how that worked. It don't. Came straight on perfection. You had, to, you had to get from the start to get the perfection. Go figure. Let's see what happened. Let us go on to perfection and shall not return to lay a foundation of repentance from moot works. He said, that's what we're going to do. We're not going to come back and lay no foundation of repentance of what of dead works. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And of Amunah toward Allahim. And Amunah toward Allahim. Of teaching of immersions and of laying on of hands. And the laying and, on of hands. Mm -hmm. And of the resurrection of the moot. And the resurrection and of, of the eternal Mashakan. And eternal Mashakan. Uh, uh, mash Mashpot. Judgment. I'm like eternal Mashakan. <laughs> Mashpot. Yeah, judgment. What happened? And this we shall do. Yeah. If Elohim permits. If he allows. Cuff. He allows. Go ahead. For all that shone on them the Aur and have tasted of the Barak of the Shamayim. He called it Aur, light. Because that's where your creativity started with light. So they got the Ruach coming in and manifesting just like it coming in as a manifestation. That's what we learned from light. It was a manifestation. It allowed. So that's what he's looking at now. Talking about it shining on him. Listen. And have tasted of the barak of the shamayim. And they have tasted the barak of shamayim. And gave to them partakers of the ruach hakadosh. And they became partakers of the ruach hakadosh. And have tasted the tube, the bar of Allahim. And they tasted the tube, the bar of Allahim. And oh, the power. Taste and see. Uh huh. And the power of the age to come. And the power of the age to, of the time to come. And if they fall back. That's what he said. Uh uh. And if they fall back. 
they refrain from renewing them again to repentance. He said he's not doing that again. Refrain, he, he want, he's not doing that. He said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to refrain. I'm not going to do it. I got it. He said, I'm not doing that again. That's what he said. Listen why. As they come back to crucify for themselves the being of Elohim and put him for an example of shame. So what, what we start to look at, what, what is one belief is that when a person um, intakes the Ruach HaKadosh and he works from that end, it's a violation for you to go against it. <clears throat> when you take it, there's an attitude, there's a behavior we have to demonstrate. And when a person puts himself out to shame it, he puts himself out of the way for Allahim to just look at, just disannul him, just cut him off from him. A lot of time when you look at him, he cut a lot of people off. He let these people were partakers of him. These people had come through. Okay. That's amazing. When those people came through, they came through a lot of things that came to be similar or been similar to of what we have to do today and receive. He fed these people too. A lot of things these folk got to see. These people had our oil on them when they came out of Mizraim. Yeah. Our oil didn't shine on them. Yes. That's amazing. These people got to taste it. According to the Elohim word, they got to do what you got to do. And you ain't gonna believe it. A lot of these people fell away, they fell away, they fell back. And you know what he didn't do? I'm not renewing them again. That's how you know it from the tour. Let these people go ahead and tell you they're disannul it. I mean, Yahushua died. Well, Jesus died, so you can do whatever you want to do. But he said, once these people done taste it, these people done seen it, he said, if they fall away, he said, I won't reframe them. Then that's right. They, I'm keeping them away from them. I'm using reframe, not refrain. Reframe. I'm not going to restructure them again. Listen, it's been torn down. I'm not putting it back up. Let it stay down. Y'all know who gave us that example of that? Hands. Who going to tell? You had to raise your hand or you were young? Mm -hmm, that's good. Yes, sir. Oh. Say it loud. What'd you say? Okay. Come on up here right quick. <laughs> Ain't that one of them code because you done pissed me off. Come on. <laughs> now, he was honest, though. That's all. Uh, now, I ain't going to give you no check this time. But then again, come on, because you got a pea coat. That coat doesn't piss me off. <laughs> now, I'll I give you, I give you um, help you out. Now, you got a little walk with it. Hmm? So, um, I don't know why I made you do that because your wife made you get her pregnant. I know that ain't It's her fault. And why it's called trouble. So, um, what happened if you look at with, um, by him, when I said reframing? not refrain, okay? You'll look at with Yahushua. After when they tore down Jericho, he told a man that go and put that back up, that he gonna lay it in his firstborn. And he gonna wipe out his whole descendancy if he put that thing back in his last. He look at, he had tore it down, you can't put it back up again. It's impossible to go back and put it up. As always, somebody did it. And he laid a foundation too. And he tore it right down. See, they understood things. When they talked about not going back to repeat works again, there were things they learned from the Torah. You learn the thing from going from listening from what they call the New Testament, you taking off with things that you don't really <clears throat> understand the premise of. They understood. He told them, the man that going to put Jericho back up, he said, man, he going to live in there first, boy. And then last one, that's going to be it. He going to wipe it their whole descendants if he go and put that thing back up. Hello? Yes, sir. You ain't going to believe who did it. A hob did that's why he cut him off of his 70 sons. Go figure. These people are really not that smart. See, a lot of things they understood from a different point of view than you. See, you trying to understand everything from what they call the New Testament. You don't understand how they saw things. You couldn't put it back. So they understood how it was impossible. <clears throat> it was impossible. You see what I'm saying? Because once it's done, you can't do that. You're going back and you're going to put it back. It's, it's impossible. It's, it's impossible. Can't even renew it again. They couldn't put Jericho back up. That's why he killed Jeremiah. That's why he killed Ahab and his 70 sons. He laid in here first one and his last one. He killed every one of them. You ain't know why, did you? Because, the, the, listen, these people waste too much time trying to tell you. I, if I, I told them Harry Potter's a good book. They're going to get more salvation out of it. Because it's too much you'll understand. These people understood. It's just a lot of things you couldn't do, and they understood it. It's already been told us you can't do that. So when you look at obtain, like people want to obtain the rock, how because it's great to have it. 
and definitely be a possessor of it. But you need to understand the responsibility that go with it. You got more responsibility on you now than you had before. Don't you know he said, well, better for you not to know the way of, of Kai than to know it and turn away from it. That's right. Now, what that mean? That you can get renewed anytime you want to. Just nope. keep farming up. See, these are things now since we transition, y'all guys got to learn. You don't have to see the more knowledge you get to whom much is given, you ain't going to believe Much is it. required. Wow. Well, I'm sure enjoying this new way we transition. Because it means you get to keep fumbling up and keep doing your own thing. whole time you'll realize it. All you're doing is laying your foundation. Yep. For him to just take you down because you don't rebuild something you weren't supposed to. Even Shaul told you, if I build again, no thing which I tear down. Make myself a I wonder where he got that from. Where could he have possibly got? See, that New Testament teaching. These people don't know what they're doing. Nope. That's why he told them, you can't go back and build that again. He got it because they knew the Torah. He tried to tell these people, they really don't know what they're doing. I don't know why people picking this book up just almost steady, steady. All right, go ahead and try to do it. Go ahead and do it. But what's your purpose? What's your intent? Because <clears throat> too much you don't understand that you're trying to do it, that you're going to find yourself in a violation. Because every time you're doing something opposite, this is sin. And you know that nobody that commits sin has no kai alone. So why would you keep doing it? Because that's where you're at. Now I tell you, everybody got to start measuring, looking at where you're at. What, what, what are you trying to do at the end of the day? Where are you trying to go at the end of the day? Y'all got it? Yes, sir. And for me, I've, I've um, endeavored to do this journey. My goal is to complete it at all costs. So it's a constant win what you got. It's a constant win of what you're trying to do. It's a constant win what does the DeBar say and what you got to get rid of and what you got to transition from. See, for a lot of people, that just ain't, it's just... I'm going to be saved anyway. That's dangerous. <laughs> it's going to be dangerous because there's an order. There's a letter set here for us to tell us, this is how it's got to be done. It can't be done outside the letter. Before, how about the letter of the Lord? You got letters now. So you transition from one letter to another one. Even Shaul told you, I wrote to you in a letter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how do you folk done got away from all these letters? He clearly told you, I wrote to you in a letter not to keep coming with fornicators. So everybody, I got away from the letter killer. This letter does kill you because you finna wind up dying. This is in a letter he told you. Yeah. He ain't told you I spoke this. He even told you that any man think himself to be a Ruachni or a Nabal, let him acknowledge that the things I did what? Right. Wrote. That's a letter. These are the Ma of Allahim, but you don't obey them. How you gonna obey this one? See, this is where people are going. See, a lot of that, they'll kill people. You dying there, you don't even realize it. And again, this is why things don't work out for like, because he told you a way of a transgressor is hard. He said, but my yoke is easy. Now he looked at He said, a way of a transgressor is hard. Listen, Yasharal, when they went off with Yeroboam, and why they went off with Yeroboam? He told them it was going to be hard on them. And, and it got easier for them when they left. Guess what you learned? His hard way, he told you, my yoke is easy, my burdens are light. <clears throat> had they stayed there, their burden were lighter. They, let me see. Had they stayed there, they would have stayed in their own land. Had they stayed there, they'd have had the sure mercies of Dao, and they left because it was hard on them. Yeah, makes sense that I think about it. They ain't even in their land to this day. Mm -hmm. So explain to me how the way of Yahuwah was harder. It wasn't. You see, you know what happened? They think like you think. You're going to run out and try it because you think your way is smarter and your way is harder. That's right. <clears throat> Even if I gave you a hard way, it's going to be easier than what you're going to get out yep, of it. Yep, that's right. right. But get, 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 Remember, though, how did they not know him? Their own cogma. Their own, see, they say, what do y'all think these people here be doing? They're trying to use their own wisdom to discern, to, dis to try to disembowel, to try to figure. And this is why your way so hard, and this is why you don't know Elohim. Because if you knew Elohim, you would understand, you would follow. You ain't going to believe it. My sheep know my voice, and they follow. That's what he said. They know my voice, then they follow. There's no way in the world for the love. Some of the people, you know they didn't leave. He clearly told you, those in the city, some in the city, they stayed. They're like, man, I'm not going to, I don't know that man. I'm not following him. 
I'm staying right here because anything you would give me, even your heart, it's gonna be easy out there. Yeah. But when you start seeing your own way, that 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 be your destruction. Mm -hmm. Y'all in here? Y'all on? They on that screen? They out there? They on YouTube? Listen, it's a lot of folks in their own way. I take some tongue smell, then you know, I got some other stuff I be studying too, and I put them together, and that's why you mess up at. Mm -hmm. That's why you mess up. I wouldn't have done it. But you gotta remember, I ain't you. Where you at is a different place. You can do that. I can't do it. <clears throat> Come on, finish that 12th chapter. 12th chapter book of Matthew, y'all. It's too much folk don't know. We, we, let me tell you something. The more we start transitioning, just for, just for word to wire, this going to make it real tight for you. I told y'all before, I was good teaching what I was teaching. I was good not talking about a lot of this stuff because I didn't feel like y'all were ready. But uh, he said, yeah, it's time to build his bell. I was kind of like it was in Kaga. I said, it wasn't time to build it. That's what I was looking at one time. He said, no. He said, it's time to build it. Yes, sir. Whether you read or not. Yes, sir. It's time to build it. That's right. Now, you set yourself up to where it's going to be quicker, a lot easier to get rid of you. Because mm. now you're getting too much information. So the stuff you usually do, you can't do it anymore. That's what he told me about Ms. Raheem. That's right. He said, after the day, you won't be able to do what you did before Ms. Raheem. That's right. You're not going to be able to do it no more. You're going to try it. Don't worry about it. You're going to try it. Listen, we're not going to argue. We're not going to fuss. We're not going to fight. I'm just going to be done. I'm going to be done with you all together. And I'm going to keep watch. And watch me. Watch how I start crying. I ain't going to be able to preach. It will not phase me because at this point where we are, y'all, I have no allegiance with nobody. Make sure y'all understand that my allegiance to Elohim. That's right. This is about our salvation. So the more you know, the more you're going to be required. You're not going to get the less. You're not going to get the, oh, come on. Not interested. Don't even worry about it. Cause listen, this thing ending. Mm -hmm. And if I keep killing time with you, we're going backwards. And I can't go backwards. We just told I can't I can't be drawing back. I gotta go forward. <laughs> Line, yeah. move up five. That's how we listen. Fall out. See what I do. Line moving up. You're gonna be left back at the end of the day, cause it's about our salvation. It ain't about your personal feelings. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what held us back, your personal feelings. Things we're attached to, other things we want to try to do versus our salvation has to be key. Come on, finish that 12th chapter right quick. And whoever, continue to verse 32. Verse 30, this is 12, 32. And whoever speaks at the bar of disgrace against the bend of Adam, yeah. it shall be forgiven him, mm -hmm. forgiven to him. Mm -hmm. But whoever insults the Ruach HaKadosh. Wow. It shall not be forgiven to him. That's what he said. Neither in this age nor in the age to come. So you see that? <clears throat> he said, I don't forgive you now. I ain't gonna forgive you later. That's where you at. So I was like, well, I don't get it now, but I could be saved later. He said, No, you can't. I ain't gonna forgive you now. I ain't gonna forgive you later. That's what he said. Listen. Call the ox tube and its pari tube. That's what he told you. He said, Now you call the tree tube. If the tree good, he said, then the fruit good. What happened? Or call the ox rotten. Or you call the ox rotten. And it's pari rotten. He said, that, he said that makes sense. So now you got to start looking at your kids. What's the tree? See, he started trying to, that's amazing. Because in the book of Barashit, when he made it, he said whose seed was in itself. That's right. That's what he said. The seed was in itself. That tree, that tree. <laughs> how, how somebody don't went there and stuck some some rotten apples on a good tree. How you do that? <laughs> put a stick and, and attach it to that tree and put all right. It ain't gonna stick. It ain't gonna stick. It ain't gonna work. So let me see now. Why would them kids be bad? I can't figure this out for nothing. What's that? That's what the man said. That's gonna offend some people. Mm -hmm. He said, don't make no difference with offend. He said, either you gonna call the tree good or you gonna call it bad. And the fruit bad. If you're gonna call the tree good and the tree and the fruit good. He said you're gonna have to do this. So now you gotta start cleaning up the tree. Mm -hmm. Why you think he came along and you can not told therefore the axe will lead to the root of the root tree? Root of the tree. Cause the fruit ain't working out. The fruit ain't no good. He said, I got I gotta kill the tree. Ain't no way to make a bad tree produce good fruit. He said, can't do it. No more down a well can give you no sweet water if it poison. He said, can't do it. It can't help both of them. Sunday the water good, Sunday the water poison. He said, no, it's poison all the time. You just look at what you can tolerate. <laughs> and he said, no, it's, it's bad. It's, it's bad. You just didn't know it though, did you? All right, listen. 
for the ox is recognized by its pari. You ain't gonna believe it. That, how, is that true? That, that's probably talking about spiritual. Hmm? Not a spiritual. We read, listen, this is all spiritual. This is exactly natural. That's how you know a tree. By the fruit it bears. That's how we know you. Your fruit, it shows. Your pari. Listen. Bani of Nakash. Oh, my wood. goodness. What do you call them? Bani of Nakash. What is that? Vipers. <clears throat> Nakash is a snake. He just called these people snakes. What do you tell them? How would you able to speak tube if you are Rosha? <laughs> what did you just tell them? Y'all a bad tree. He done told the man just told you about a tree and the fruit bad. Then he done told them people about them being roasted. What did now? What you hold on for a minute? What you say? What 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 are you saying? <laughs> I just told you about the tree. He said either you call the tree good or you call the tree and you call the fruit good. If you call the tree bad or you call the fruit bad. <clears throat> he said, man, y'all roast you. What you say? What you heard? He said, put it out there. However they took it, they, he said, I just put it out there. So either way they go, he done healed them. He said, I ain't talking about your mom and them, or I'm talking about you. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about your kids. That's right. That's what he just told yes, them. Sir. What was the purpose of telling them that? All right, let's see what happened. For from the overflow of the lob, see the paw speaks. You see what he said? You ain't going to believe it. Some of that stuff, man, I don't know where that came from. Yet he just told us something we didn't even know. If I took a cup and I started pouring water in that cup, at what point would that water start coming out that cup? Overflow. I don't know where that came from. See, now you don't realize when stuff done came up from you, it's because you got a lot more of that than you thought. Yeah, that's right. That slipped. Yep. That didn't slip. See, nope. his principles <laughs> of what he tried to tell us, let him know it overspilled a bank. That's right. Like when a, when a, think about it. When a river get full, it overspilled its banks. Yep. I don't know where that came from. Yes, you do. It's more of that. Yep. One drop of water, don't they don't no straw that broke no camel back. Mm -hmm. Don't you be stupid. How many straws on that camel back? Right. Yeah. Take all them off and just put one and boo that one and put another and move that one and see. <laughs> Ain't no straw broke that camel back. It's a bunch of them broke That's it right. Back. That's right. But, but you like the philosophy. Yeah. Right. That, your philosophy sounds good. A lot of stuff, I just really listen to people because it don't make no sense. Right. A lot of stuff, it really don't make the straw that broke the camel back. How many up there? One? No, multiple. But, this, but see your logic? Mm -hmm. Who gave you that logic? The straw, that singular, that broke the camel back. How many straws on that camel back? You show me one straw, you pull it back and break it. Because you like lies. That's why you buy it, you like, listen. They, let me tell you about people. Their education allowed them to play with words. They play word games, okay? They put a lot of stuff. You get a time, you can research, you can watch a lot of stuff. You can watch people and listen to people, stuff people say, which makes absolutely no sense. You just have to sound and look. There's a lot of, there's a lot of information that dispels a lot of stuff people say. That's not logical. It's not practical. Okay, there's not a one straw to break a camel's back. Okay? You have too many straws on his back. You just added one more to the pile that's there. So the stuff that's coming out that you're doing, it's more in there. Yeah. This is right. not one. I told you, I'm, I'll tell you, you ain't got one problem with me. That's right. I know you don't. That's right. You got a bunch of problems. Yep. I, listen, I can read y'all. I know you got more than one problem. I don't buy that no straw broke no camel back. You got problems. Mm -hmm. This is why y'all can't, this is why you can't manifest the behavior. Because you got more than one problem. Mm -hmm. But you want to tell yourself a lot, the straw that broke the camel back. How many y'all like that saying? How many y'all like that saying before? Come on, folks. Don't act like me. Come on. That's, think, about, think about the psychology of that. Though. Does that really make sense that one straw broke a camel back? No. Logically. Why we don't address all the mother straw? Right. Because this is what we do. Is, this is society. We like to say things to make it logical, to make it feel good to us. That's even to me. We do. We do. Listen, no one wants to deal with themselves. When I sat down, I had to send you a deal myself, stuff I do. Just look at stuff. Look at yourself. Look at things you do. And you grade them yourself. Ain't gonna let you know because we'll look at it's it's big things. It's people out here. Man, there's people out here killing folk for no reason. He said, You ain't gonna believe it. When you're doing wrong, ain't no reason. 
we can make a lot of logic for things we do and there are no real answers for them. Other than we make excuses because other people make excuses and we grade ourselves because other people do and they don't seem bad and that's just, it's just been a bad protocol. What he tried to get us to do is to strip ourselves. And stripping ourselves, a lot of times, let's get everything out, just like with spring cleaning. We had to go through everything, get it out. You know you can go back and put it, but now you go and put it back in with an intelligence. You know what you realize a lot of times you do spring cleaning? How much stuff you got you don't even use. Right. How much stuff you really got, it's in the way. Yeah. Get what he told you to do, lay aside every what? Go, go find your way. You ain't gonna find them until you pull everything out. Pull them out, pull out all your drawers. You know what you'll say? I've been looking for this done thing. All this, I didn't know what it, go through some of the stuff you, you said, but I'm tore up stuff, I, and this thing been right here. He just let us see. That's why the word has to come in. Cause look at, look, a lot of times we don't found stuff. I found stuff when it been too late. I need this earlier. So now he comes in and challenges us so we can go in and start finding things before we get to the mosh pot. Let me tell you what happened, similar. <sighs> I had an uncle. My mama had some brothers. My dad had brothers. I had an uncle uh, years ago, though, uh, uncle before them. And um, his daddy-in-law um, wound up coming to check something he had. And um, when he came down to check it, he, my uncle, he was straight. He was honest. He was like, you can check it. I assure you, I ain't got it. His dad-in-law accused him of stealing. And, um, His wife. She wasn't like a liar, but she didn't want to let it go. So she pretended it wasn't there and she covered it up so he couldn't find it. That's us. That'd be my uncle, you cold. Laban came and said he had stole his Allaheen. That was an offense for us to have it. Just so happened though, my uncle got her right before they went into the Beth Allaheen. He told them to take off all that stuff they had and get rid of them foreign deities. Cause he didn't, he didn't know she had it. You ain't gonna believe it though. According to when they came and so he didn't know he had it, but something had to be in her behavior that he told them to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. When he found out she had it, he didn't, unlike us, I mean, I, you keep it baby. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? Don't wear it to serve it, don't. He said, take that junk and bury it. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it. He said, cause we going to the Beth Elohim. He told him to get rid of them far and he because your behavior gonna show it. <laughs> a lot of stuff you think don't show. Now nobody caught it when he served. My uncle caught it. He knew they had it. I always told him to get rid of it. We going to the Beth Elohim. Yeah. You can't take it with you. See, you know, there's a lot of stuff we hold on to. You shouldn't have brought it. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have brought it. I I, I do more um, plowing now. Um, more searching. Aggravation, because my desire is for us to, um, to be where we need to be. And I know we got a lot of holdups because of things. And um, some things I put out, I might say, you might not understand at the time, but it's important for us to get to the truth. And um, to get to the truth, we got to get, get, get through things and cover things that unveil us all. Uh, there will never be an excuse or a rationality for your color for salvation. That'll never happen. Anybody heard that? I don't know what you heard, but that's where you at, and you needed to hear that. And you take your color on to the mouth cool with you. Um, for me, I think it's important to go back to identify truth so we can try to see how it played a part or plays a part in the endeavor of what we're trying to do to get to the completion of salvation. There's a lot of things we've negated along the way because of we don't want to offend, we don't want no problem. Can't we all just get along like Rodney King? He did that. You see how America got back? We, and that killed all the racial killing. Because <clears throat> he didn't want to address the problem. Remember, how remember he came out and said that? Mm -hmm. Man, they had shirts on now. They had, if it ain't one king, it's another one. A lot of y'all wasn't even living. Some of them living. Listen, he, they, they were like, <laughs> beautiful. Can't we all just get along? And the shooting stopped. Nope. Because he shouldn't have said it. That's we right. should have addressed the problem. That's right. There was a lot of people dressed. Whites was ready to sit down and talk to fix what we need to do. And Rodney King owed me a dumb mouth. Said, can't, can't we all just get along? And we've been doing better ever since. No. We need to address the problem.
It was hurtful. And I'm and listen, they had talk show people. And, it, and listen, people were able to speak freely. And white people listen. It were people listening. But you said it wasn't a problem. Like Nikki Haley. She done told her. She said America is not racist. She said America has never been racist. She said she grew up an Indian girl in South Carolina. Segregated South Carolina. Segregated South Carolina. America ain't racist. That's what she said. You just got to believe. Folks, they're not even practical. You're not even intelligent. Nope. Don't tell America a lie. The better conversation would have been America is very much racist. We the people. It's our responsibility to stop. Don't lie to get a position because right. we don't help people. That's right. That's right. Call a spade a spade. Black people play just black people racist. Yeah. No. Chinese people racist. Mexican people racist. Everybody right. has it. We have to overcome it. We have to say enough of us that stand for truth. But you can't get the truth till we address all the truths. That's right. how we see us a problem. We go back and say, really, this is how this was constructed. Really, this is how this was made. Really, this is the order that he that he actually set down. If we follow this, then we move from truth into truth. But because we want to address it and everybody got their own truth, this is why we stay chaotic. This is why we never get nowhere. Just like with church, listen, churches, mosques, synagogues, worst places in the planet, all of it, including the town down. Everyone's just terrible. Because people ain't practical. I don't get it. So if it's the truth that happened, why we can't address the truth and fix it? If I don't know the truth about myself, how am I going to change? That's right. How are you going to change if you don't know the truth about yourself? That's right. Why won't we address the truth and look at what have I done to impact, to hurt, to hinder? So that I have an opportunity to do what? To make reconciliation, to make change. How is it we had to reconcile with Allah? He ain't nobody got to reconcile with us. It's not even practical. It ain't pra How was it you reconcile Allah without anything? You couldn't. You had to give yourself. There were often had to get because there was no way you could violate and not and not recompense. How, that's what made they had like reparation is new. What were people doing when Zakir when he met Yahushua when he said, "Listen, man." If I took from some folk, this is the New Testament. And that in the law back then we did that. That man said, listen, man, if I took anything, <laughs> if I took anything I had to, he said, I restored the same exact what I gave back. Nope. Interest? Yes, sir. Can you believe black people got to know they want reparation day? More than what they said they probably had gotten. It's a, so when somebody hit me in the back of my car and they tell my car, they fix my car, why they got to still pay me money above my car? Because you had to put me back whole. You put me out of you put me out of inconvenience. Mm -hmm. You put me, I suffered. Mm -hmm. You can't come say, oh nigga, shut your mouth, your car fit. No. I had to take medication, I had to go to chiropractor, I had to go to the hospital, I got <clears> bills, <throat> and then I got suffering. What about for what my suffering? You even paid me for my suffering. So how do we not have to come say about reparation? Because you know why? This is why they push you away from. Leave the Old Testament alone. Stay with the New Testament, we born again. Because no one wants to be realistic. Your book was about reparations. That's what he wanted, reparations. You transgressed, you violated, you owe me. <laughs> no, I, stop it. I'm not, but I'm trying to just show you, first of all, how impractical people are. The, the people, no, nobody's practical. We need to move on for Yes, because you're not the person. Listen, I got to call them by for a second. Oh. He in a 2025 turn around. Mind your business. I run. Boom! I done knocked the man all up here. Hit him over here. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. God. Oh, oh, man. You all right? You all right, man? You all right? Oh, oh you, you good, man. man. Man, I just give you something for that just going on. You be all right. Man, you ain't got to do ain't got to call the police to do nothing like that. We ain't going to move on. I told him, man, slammed him, man, him, flipped him on him, tore up his car. Now I want to do a fix it car. That man got other, he got other damages. Yeah. He got, you might have to suffer, I don't know how long behind that. The impact. So the, the law will come in and say that. A jury even look at that. How nobody can't see reparations for our 400 something years of oppression? Because nobody fell. It don't even make common sense. Now that fell. <laughs> Woman said she got raped 29,000 years ago and she, they said, listen man, you get $5 million. Trump touched a white woman, Teddy, years ago, didn't even sleep with her. She got $5 million. And this reparation stuff is retarded. I don't know what that was where they gave her. You gave one white woman $5 million for a titty been touched back here years ago, and you tell me I can't get no money? Y'all not even practical. 
They ain't even practical. Let me see. Sean Cone, he done sat here, quote, what they say now, a ledge, where, we, where he did on a ledge, or where he did on a roof, <laughs> where he did in the basement. That right, that right. So a ledge, a roof, a basement, <laughs> ain't that right? In a loaf, wherever he did it at, she got 35 million. Yeah. All I'm saying is, this isn't about reparation. I just want you to understand something. People are not practical, right. black or white. Some numbers don't make sense. I wouldn't have gave her no 35 million. I'll tell you that now. No, he didn't get no 35 million. I tell you, I look at her and say, mm, not no 35 million. Now, what did you on lost? I get that and I get a couple hundred bucks. Because these women ain't innocent. I'm just, some of this stuff, no, I don't buy this stuff. I don't, I don't believe all this stuff. You, listen, women looking for a payday out here, and I think that's sickening and disgusting. I don't think, no man, that's, you can't come back nobody no 20, 30 years later, old rank it up vagina, can't do nothing time somebody owe y'all that money. That's right. I ain't trying to look at, look at you know good where that thing worth $20. <laughs> <laughs> I'm burning that thing. That's All right. the wall go, trying to sell somebody some new tie, they ain't got no skin, they ain't got no metal shooting out of it. I'm not even getting no $35 million for them right. tie. Man, please, that's that retarded. Some of these numbers don't even make no sense. Girl, no good way you ain't got no $35 million vagina between y'all legs. I told Smith about that scandal that morning. I said, $600. I told him, you done seen $600? I said, no, I hadn't. She come with that lady with $600 right now, lit right here. I said, I know you crazy. I said, I ain't paying no $600. I said, I ain't no sucker. I want no sucker there. They ain't finna start now. $600? No, 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 no. I had to dig her up from the grave. She leave him 20 years from now. That's a lot of money. <laughs> These folks just too, I don't know where these folks get these numbers from. But we're looking at offense, though. We're talking about offense. <laughs> I just don't get, some of this stuff, I just don't get it. I really don't get it. But you can't pay people for what you wrongfully did and you rightfully owe. Y'all don't look at it. We had just as many rapes. We got just as many detriment. We got the crack cocaine. These women, they sort of say I was drugged up. What were we? Drunk. Not just drugged up, we were drugged. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about drug, literally drug. Before they crack cane, they were drugging us. That's right. They drug us on the ship. Yeah. <laughs> right. You, we've been drugged for, I don't know, this drug stuff ain't new. Huh? I so said, we got a lot of work to be done. But anyway, I'm, I'm, we're finna talk about this. So I'm gonna try to get y'all along. I, I, I done lost it and went all these places. Hold on, I can remember what we was at some kind of way. But that Matthew chapter 12, yes, by sir. verse 35. 35. Goodness, look at that. Boy, I remember, I'm trying to give me one of the memory things, too. <laughs> they say I got some pill pill help you remember. Ginkgo biloba. Listen, what it is? Ginkgo biloba. Come on, put a check up. I ain't asking nobody with that one. Come on. And when Kerry come in, he get one, too. Come on, come on. Hold up the class. And he's trying to sell his own stuff out here. And then folks, somebody listen to this tape, somebody done start ordering that stuff offline already. <laughs> hey, you took any? Take another, get another check, him messed up something. <laughs> trying to set a phone something he ain't even took. He trying to remember if he took it. I can't quite remember. <laughs> he said he can't remember if he took it. Oh. <laughs> but but let, let's see where they're going. We just talk. We talking. That's fine. We just talk. Yes, fine. sir. Let, let's see where they go. 1235, what did he tell them now? A tube each from the tube oh, treasure. Oh, back up at 34. What did he say? Benim of Nakash, <laughs> how would you mind. able to speak tube if you are Rosha? Okay, yeah, he talking about how they call them some snakes and how they were able to speak tube when they were Rosha wrong. And he talking about the good tree, you can go on that 35. Yes, sir. The tube tree about a good tree, can't, a good tree, either call the tree good and the fruit good, either call the tree, ba call the tree bad and the fruit bad. That's what he said. That's what he said. Let's see what we're talking about. That. See that seventh chapter book of Matthew Yahoo. Y'all give him a little time. I try to get out the window. I see Matthew. I see he don't have a smile. Leo here laughing at me. I made a funny. Seven thirteen. Kerry, let me ask you something for a second. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you something. I'm gonna give you for example. So now this is um, Matthew Yahoo seven thirteen. Cause you from Atlanta. So you grew up in Atlanta, right? So seven, Matthew Yahoo seven and thirteen. So I ask you about something. Now, when you come, when you we was in Atlanta, I was trying to get them to understand. Y'all know care. Y'all know how many of y'all know care. They know you know pretty much these folks I am. What about the people you you pretty much know them too? Yeah. How long you say you think you know me? <coughs> 
15 years. 15, 16 years. How many times you figure I call you up and just talk to you? I was just checking. 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 Carrie said, let him use me. <laughs> you know that? I use you and you use my pen. So here we go, Matthew Yahoo, chapter 7, verse 13. Listen. Come in through the narrow entrance. Y'all hear what he talk to? Come in through the narrow gate. Y'all see it narrow? How much room you got to play that? So that, that steering wheel your head doing like this ain't going to work. Come in through the narrow gate. What happened? For the entrance is wide. See that for the entrance is wide. And expansive and is and the, the rock to that, the destruction. And it's expansion. It's an expansion to the way they're going to the rock. See, the entrance is wide, and the expansion way is and the expansion way is open up wide. The road is wide too, because it's a lot of folk going into it. That's what they do. You know, sometimes they say, "Why this a two lane street?" You know, typically why they might do that, Boston, because it's not a lot of traffic. Typically, you try to put a four lane and five lane, like you're going to spread. Well, you say, "Man, they need to open this spread web and make it wider." They've already did the study, and they don't see a need for it. It's not a lot of folk going that way. When you got something like 285, you can't do two lanes. You got to open that thing up, get your five, six lane. You got to 75 up toward Marietta. Got to get you. You ain't going to believe it. There's a lot of folk going that way. <clears throat> he needs you to understand that. So you've been trying to figure out why some of these streets don't have a two lane. Why? He said, because really, we done did the assessment. It's not really a lot. Of, it's not enough people going their way for us to open it up. You ain't going to believe why all this time he done created all these people. And many years the rock been going. Why he ain't made that gate no wider and that street no wider. I, why you, I'm th if you had to just take what they say, a lucky guess. Why y'all think? Not many going. Do y'all, how many folk y'all figured on being here? Probably about a million people on the planet all together. Billions. Way more than that. Trillions. You don't think that gate should be wider than that? Y'all don't think that street ought to be wider than that? That man said, you ain't going to believe it. The number's still the same. Yeah. Every time he, because you don't know what they'll do sometimes. You'll see a two lane and you'll start seeing them do work like they're doing on 20. Because they start looking at the traffic back up and on. He, you don't hear that man. It still ain't that many folk going. He said, man, all this time since I put this gate up in this road, do y'all know the numbers ain't changed? They're trying to help y'all understand it. And the thing, how many folk been here? Probably what? Probably a billion people probably been here all together since the beginning. What y'all figure? Probably a billion? What, about a billion and one million? That's crazy. Y'all think it's been more than a billion people on the planet since the beginning? Yes. How many people on the planet now? About 400 million? Seven. 700 million, 700 Seven million. See that? You got billion. 700 million. 700, what? 7 billion. 7 billion now? So you figure since the beginning <laughs> to now, so it's been 7 billion since the world was started and now. I'm still wrong. And the gate ain't got no wider and the street ain't got no wider. What that tell you? So let me ask y'all a question. So preachers should really leave all this alone and we should just keep playing. Don't y'all know ain't but so many people going. He knew that before he put this gate here. And you, this, this is what I'm irritated for. The man hadn't changed the gate size or the road since he put it there. Goodness. But he's been increasing people here. Mm. And you too stupid to stop doing what you're doing and don't realize you ain't going to make it in. Right. I try to, I done told y'all, but I know y'all play with me all the time. So I, I, I do laugh. And y'all know how I be laughing about y'all going to Shio. Y'all done, pull that tape up. The one, I, you know why I ran them down, but I was playing them laugh about them going to show. Tim, get it. I, I, I ain't this, t Big Tim. Big, big Tim. Big Tim. Put that, put that video up. The one about I me mean, playing about them going. That's why I don't play about it. That's why you can't play. That's why you got to get out your fitters and realize how serious this is. Yeah. You can't afford for me to mess around. You can't afford for me to miss it. Think about it. I brought all these people here. I don't plan on saving them anyway. And you got time to play. You got time to get in your feelings. You got time to get over your handcuffs. I got problems. He said, good, because I wasn't trying to save you anyway. Mm. I ain't taking but so many. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. OK, that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Listen. For the entrance is wide and expansive is the rock to destruction. That's the one he said wide. They tell me, man, there's plenty of room over here. You ain't, you ain't, gonna, believe, you ain't gonna believe where you going. Man, I could run through that thing with my eyes closed. What get you think it is? <laughs> what get you think it is? Go ahead. And many are those who enter it. That's what he told you. There's a lot of them going that way. 
Listen. But the entrance is narrow, and the Dirac of Kai is constrained. Yeah. And those who find it are few. That's what he said. Ain't but, look at that. Ain't but a few people ain't going to find it. Y'all ain't going to believe it. That, listen, you ain't going to believe it. He, and guess what he said? He said, I was found in that one you seeking for me. Yeah. Man, look, <clears throat> I, I be thinking about that thing so much. I'm, I wasn't looking. Listen. And I found him. That's what scared me. It been different. I had been on that endeavor the whole time. I wasn't even looking. When I stumbled across him, I wasn't even looking. That's how I did. When I was a young boy, I started out, you know, six years old going to church. I said, I didn't find him. You know when I found him? When I wasn't even looking. That's what scared me. I was looking. Low and high. Didn't even find him. Then when I wasn't looking, there you go. That's what scared me. You found something that you weren't even looking for. Mm-hmm. Just like sometimes you might be going through your drug. Think about that. And you said, I looked for that thing and couldn't find it. And now I was just yeah. kidding. How many of <laughs> y'all, so, so now you understand that principle. Yeah. I was found of them that weren't even looking. How many of y'all don't found something you weren't even looking for? Yeah. But when you looked for it, you couldn't, couldn't find, find it. it. That be Yahuwah. Mr. Yahuwah. I'm trying to tell y'all, listen. Beware to you from Nabaim of falsehood. You know what he told you? He said, You beware of Nabaim of falsehood. Listen. Who come to you dressed like sheep. Clothing. They come to you dressed like sheep. Clothing, but within they are predatory wolves. You ain't going to believe why he told you. Why he told you to come to you dressed like sheep? What's that? What you saying? I said, Because they follow, they follow who? Ra. They follow Ra. Because Satan himself transformed himself into. Because <laughs> they're docile. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's up here somewhere. Oh. They're, they're, I know I know what the fuck on. Now, what you say? Satan himself transformed himself into a sheep of light. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, this is new. All this, I'm, listen, I too am a student. <laughs> hey, why is a sheep of light? <laughs> <laughs> But, but no, but, but no, not not necessarily tell you like, even on the word. But what you look at when you look at a sheep, the reason why you look at them, you look at what we call innocence. That's why you look at the sheep when they try to transform into them sheep because they try to transform into innocence. Okay, that's what a sheep look. He's actually innocent. You seen a guilty sheep? And pretty much consider even when you look at our dietary law, you find him kudash. Mm-hmm. You'll find him to be kosher. I mean, he's regulated. Mm-hmm. Y'all got it? So what do you think people try to transform themselves into? To look like I'm regulated. Try mm-hmm. to look like I'm kudash. Look like I'm something acceptable. Mm-hmm. See, you got to understand sometimes why he's telling you certain things. When it came down to your offering, it's not too many offers a sheep don't fit. So people are trying to make themselves look as though they are acceptable. That they're innocent, okay? <coughs> that they're not a violator, okay? Listen. You can recognize them clearly by their pari. See that? He, uh-oh, back to the tree. You can recognize them by their pari. Listen, by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorns Definitely. or figs from briars? You know what? Man, the other day I went, um, I don't know, I think me and Oz, we was out there, we were picking them grapes. Boy, I got stuck. That thing, I was like, woo, good to mind that thing stuck me so bad. We were picking them. Man, what that grapes? thing put up. So what happened? What grapes? Just like people sit around and claim that something happened to them they were doing right. Baby might have bust this and we were picking them grapes and I got that big thorn stuck in my finger. <clears throat> you weren't picking grapes. Mm-mm. You ain't gonna believe it. You ain't living right either. That's right. So he's trying to tell you, just look at it. He's trying to get these people to understand something. I just said, follow me. That's all. You know what I'm saying? That, whew. God damn it. What, what's wrong with me? That grape. Ooh. Where that thing hurt? Picking them grapes. You're trying to figure out, where you picking grapes at? <laughs> exactly. Listen. So every tube ox produces two pari. That's a, here we go again. Same old stuff. Listen. And the rotten one produces rosha pari. Is that what he told you? The one ain't no good. That's what they produce. Listen. A tube ox is not able to produce rosha pari. What did that Ava has the ability? So when he's looking for the seed of Abraham, which one are you looking at he's looking for? The ones two. that ain't rotten. Two. See, wh- this, this is something you want to find too, because I know that they're smart. Now let's translate. See, when you look at Abraham, Abraham had more than one son. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. Okay, he had more than one son. Okay, but he separated. He moved them. That's why when he started to reclaim the way he gonna do, it, he's gonna do this by Amun. So it took a natural bearing to get him here. It was natural that you got him. But then he started looking at who I'm attached to him. See, the Amunah that he had that came from within, that was good. Because Abraham was good. So everybody who had that same light, precious Amunah, you ain't going to believe it. They're not able to do nothing, Russia. Mm, that's right. You look at some of the mother boys he got. <clears throat> they got right. Oh, a lot of them. Everybody can trace their descendants back to Abraham. If you're Yehuda, Yashara, you can trace it back to Abraham. Even Louis, he said he was yet in his loins. Mm -hmm. Louis ain't didn't screw up. But then look at the ones with the Amunah. Makes a difference, don't it? Okay, because he told you what would the seed at? In itself. And how many of y'all got y'all Amunah in your pocket? Where your Amunah at? In, in yourself. That's all I'm saying. Listen. And a Rosha ox shall not yield to Pari. He said it, it, he said it not. It's not. Listen. Every ox that does not produce two pari shall be cut down and thrown into the fire. Because look, look, what, look at what you've been putting out. See, these are things you need to look at too. Every ox that don't produce two fruit. Why do you think he told you to train them up? Mm -hmm. So you've been thinking you've been good. You've been innocent. You just, I'm just doing my part. You're supposed to train them up. So they, they won't go in that way. So when they get at the tree, get up, it won't depart from it. Hello? Yes, sir. See, we done took our hands out. Well, I can't got to let him. Nope. He just told you what you got to do. That's why you think you got to keep training them. That's right. Because that, that fruit come from that tree now. <clears throat> I heard a preacher years ago. <laughs> they say he tell him, say he tell him. He said, if it's a rotten member he had in that church. He said, he said, that didn't come from that tree. He said, that thing rolled from down to here from somewhere else. <laughs> he said, it rolled under his tree. He said, he said, that tree, he said, that fruit didn't come from him. <laughs> He said, that fruit rolled from under here, down here, and it rolled under my tree. That was his fruit. <laughs> that was his fruit. They still produce them. Rotten. Come on. Therefore, you shall recognize them by their pari. He said, therefore, he said, that's how you're going to recognize them. Listen. Not everyone who says to me, what they say? My Adon, Adoni, shall enter into the Makuth of Shamayim. That's what he said. He said, not everybody that say they're going to enter in. Listen. But rather the one who does the will of Abi, who is in the Shamayim. That's what he said. He said, rather the one that do the will of his father in Shamayim, that's the one going to end in. Listen. And it shall be that on that yum, many shall say to me. What are they going to say? Adani, Adani, did master, we not? Master, master, did we not? Naba in your shim. Did we not Naba? Uh-huh. And, and in your shim, drive out Shadim. Drive out Shadim. And in your shim, do many wonders. And did a lot of work. Then I shall answer them saying, What you gonna say? I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Depart from me, Who? workers of lawlessness. That's what he just told you. He said, You violators. He said, You did it. He said, But I didn't know you because you're a violator. That's what he said. You're a violator. And I don't even know you. Come on. So anyone who shama these Dabarim of mine. So everybody, anybody who hear these words that I'm speaking, and does them, and you do them, shall compare to a kakma ish who that, built his bed he said, I'm on gonna, a rock. I'm gonna, I'm gonna compare them to a person that has kakma, wise man who has skills. See, that's important because they knew when it came down to building the, the, uh, the tent, when it came down to building the things he picked, <clears> even <throat> making the clothes that they wore, he always used people who had a skill. Right. And they had a skill because they were getting it from him. Right. They did not have the worldly skill. They had the wisdom came from him. He gave them that skill. That's he right. told them, pick these guys because I've given them something. Right. I've given them a skill. They can do this. So now he's saying, watch these people. This is who I'm going to liken them. This is who they're going to be resembled to. They're going to be resembled to somebody that has cock mouth. Listen. And the rain fell and the streams flooded mm -hmm. and the winds blew and they touched that Beth. And what happened? But it did not fall. But it didn't move. Because it was founded upon the sewer. That's right. It was signed on a rock. Come on. And every one shama these dabarim of mine and not doing them shall be compared to a foolish each who they built do. his beth upon the sand. And what happened? The rain fell, mm -hmm. the streams flooded, mm -hmm. and the winds blew, mm -hmm. and they encountered that beth. And what happened? It fell, and it collapsed, and its collapse was great. Why? And it came to pass 
when Yahushua finished saying these dabarim, what they the crowds were astonished by his teaching. That's what they were. That, 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 that thing. They said, that thing now, that's pretty good. What happened? For he was teaching them as a ish of authority and not like the scholars. Mm. Scholars, scribes. He don't sound like somebody just copying something to say something. Right. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. That's what they noticed about him. It was interesting. They noticed that about him too. Ain't that something? Very interesting. Let's look at something. Can we look at something? Yes, sir. See if that the uh, seventh chapter of the book of, uh, see that Uyakra. They call it uh, Leviticus, Uyakra. <coughs> seven. Let me see about fifteen. I guess. Let me see. Let's see where we're going with this. Listen. Now, as for the basar of the zabak of his tuda shalom offerings. It shall be eaten on the yum of his offering. Mm -hmm. He shall not leave any of it over until morning. Yeah. But if the zabak of his offering is a vatav or a freewill offering, it shall be eaten on the yum that the offer is that he offers his zabak. Yeah. And on the morrow, what is left of it, it may be eaten. Mm -hmm. But what is left over from the basar of the zabak on the third yum shall be burned with fire. Mm -hmm. So if any of the basar of the zabak of his shalom offerings should ever be eaten on the third yum, he who offers it shall not be accepted and it shall not be reckoned to him. It, it won't be accounted to him. He said not gonna be, a, he not, he, I'm not gonna count that to anything. What happens, son? It shall be an offensive thing and the nafash who eats of it shall bear his own iniquity. You see that? You're going to bear your own guilt. Listen. Also, the basar that touches anything unclean shall not be eaten. Mm -hmm. It shall be burned with fire. As for other basar, anyone who is clean may eat such basar. Anybody that clean can eat it. But mm -hmm. the nefash who eats the basar of the zabak of shalom offerings, which belong to Yahuwah, while his uncleanness is, is on him, what happened? that nefash shall be cut off from his arm. He's going to cut that joke off. You know what that cut off is, isn't it? What happens if I cut your arm off? Where it live at? The reason you use that, that you want to use that connotation, you're doing it, because remember, there's supposed to be a body. So if you cut something off from the body, can it live? You ain't going to believe it. That's the whole purpose of separating you. So you won't live because they had to work and function cohesively as one man. Listen. When the nefash touches anything unclean, whether human uncleanness or an, an unclean animal or any unclean detestable thing and eats of the basar of the zabak of shalom offerings, which belong to Yahuwah, that nefash shall be cut off from his arm. Come on. Then Yahuwah spoke to Musha saying, What is saying? Speak to the Bani of Yasharal saying, what is you shall not eat any fat from an ox, a sheep, or a goat. Also, mm -hmm. the fat of a carcass and the fat of an animal torn by beast may be used for any work, but you shall certainly not eat it. A lot of times we be eating that meat, got that fat in it. I need y'all to start separating that fat. Yes, sir. Y'all <coughs> hear me? Yes, sir. Start separating that fat. Listen. For whoever eats the fat of the animal of which he shall bring near a fire offering of it to Yahuwah, even the nefash who eats shall be cut off from his arm. He separated when they brought an offering because the fat was used to burn it upon the altar. So they weren't supposed to eat the fat. They said, we're not offering it. I just want to stay on safe line. Don't eat it. Come on. You should not eat any dom, either of bird or of animal, in any of your of your dwellings. Y'all hear that? You're not supposed to eat any blood. 
or any other animals. Mm -hmm. Any nefash who eats any dom, even that nefash shall be cut off from his arm. Y'all understand that? So you're going to cut y'all what that means. You're just going to live somewhere else. What that mean? I put y'all for you to die. I separated you. Listen. Then Yahuwah spoke to Musha, saying, mm -hmm. speak to the Bani of Yasharal, saying, mm -hmm. he who offers the Zabak of That's his fine. That's fine. So we understand that. The fact <coughs> we're not eating. We understand the part about eating no blood. I know now that's, that don't justify you and Ryan burning up that meat. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put that out there. We wanted to eat. Listen, he was on that bad side. He was cooking. When I seen so much smoke. Them guys, them guys were cooking. They all were burnt out. I said, I said, they all so burnt out. I looked on that table. I said, I said, I said, said Dexter cooking. I said, they done. Man, that meat was so char grill on it. I said, I ain't on the floor had charcoal in it. <laughs> I said, man, we make this stuff here dead. I mean, it dead. I seen the meat die, reincarnate, die, reincarnate. Them jokes, they love that burnt. Yosha too, burn up some meat. I no, I'm gonna take, look at, where Yosha? Oh my God. We took her to fuck up. Them folks kept bringing that chalk out, eating it. Tea was getting whiter and whiter. I said, <laughs> what is the stuff? Man, stuff was like brick it. It was just brick it. I said, no. Y'all got, you cook it. You want it cooked, but you can't burn it. I'm going to make that a sin. <laughs> Did they say it, brother? They see it. They see it. I'm talking about these guys were charcoal. Man, if they kept bringing that burnt meat, I said, I said, where y'all keep bringing this burnt meat for? Uh, Mr. They, they keep, I said, they who? That's the rhyme. Yo, I told them, don't even sit by me. They know, sit down now, <laughs> let them folk get it, let them get it. After I get mine, then let them burn it up. Then mm -hmm. right. I'm like, oh, Yahoo, let me get mine first. <laughs> then you can eat that burnt up meat, you know. But I understand that they want to be cautious and make sure you don't have blood. So you learn the difference between blood and it have juices. So you just got to learn the difference. You know, trust me, I would, preacher ain't going to lead you wrong. Cause I eat, you see, if I eat it, I ain't eating no blood. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm saying? But that's, that's critical. Y'all got it because you're dealing with that you'll start to deal with something that could be poison. And mm -hmm. the reason why it'd be poison, because what'd he say? Kai. He don't cut, because like, well, no, we don't look at it part. No, we don't got cause of Kai because it's a violation. Mm -hmm. Once he said you're going to be cut off, so how do I have to view blood? Poison. I got to view it as, see, you got to understand, you know, like what? So if you see me put anthrax in some, or what is the other you? Strychnine, what you going to say? Why? So eating the dumb will kill you. kill you. So we understand that poison not doing it, correct? Right. So these are things we're trying to watch to make sure that we're knowledgeable of things we didn't pay attention to before. We start to see now how they could come in and become a problem for us. OK, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and we say all that because we want to make sure we're clear on when we go back through the Torah, how things kind of intersect and interlining and in a lot. <clears throat> and a lot of times we don't pay attention to and see how critical the writings are and how essential I mean they promote something to us. Right. And that's the goal, trying to make sure we understand the whole premise, the dynamics of what we have. OK, now, now looking at these things and, and looking at what we said, there are things that we sat down and we try to make sure that we're mindful of. OK, uh, let's see um, the seventh chapter of the book of U Ala Shemu. They call it Exodus. These were the names. Now, Exodus is something that they made up, which is totally different than what the book name is. Let me see 76. Let me have 71 first. Let me see what that say. 71. Listen. Then Yahuwah said to Musha. Then he said to Musha. See, I make you as Allahim to Pharaoh. Hold on, hold on. Your, your, your mic died. So I'm having this mic. Let me be in it. And again. What did he say? See, I make you as Allahim to Pharaoh. Y'all see that? Ra'a. It's the sea. Listen. And your ak, Aharun, shall be your nabi. That's what he said. Listen. You shall speak all that I command you, Listen. and your ak, Aharun, shall speak to Pharaoh that he let the Bani of Yasharal go out of his land. Mm -hmm. But I shall hearten Pharaoh's lob that I may multiply my ox 
and my wonders in the land of Mizraim. That's what he said. He said, I harden his law so I can multiply it. See, this, this is what people, the, the multiply, you have to be able to the increase. The multiply, <coughs> you're going to increase. You can do an addition, but that number kind of, you know what I'm saying, it kind of overpowered. Like I told you, like, you just learn and looking. It makes no sense that one time one can be multiplication. It's not logical. It's not practical. Because one time one is what? So how can it be multiplying? Wow. He says, see, I've hardened his law so that I can multiply my odds. Listen. When Pharaoh does not shaman to you. When he don't listen. Then I shall lay my hand on Mizraim mm -hmm. and bring out my sabot, my arm, the bani of Shorah, mm -hmm. from the arats of Mizraim by great mashpah. Listen. The Mishrites shall know that I am Yahuwah when I stretch out my hand on Mizraim and bring out the bani of Yasharal from their midst. Listen. So Musha and Naharun did as Yahuwah commanded them. Thus they did. Musha was the being, was the being of eighty shanim old, and Aharum the being of eighty three shanim old. Mm -hmm. When they spoke to Pharaoh, mm -hmm. now Yahuwah spoke to Musha and to Aharum, saying, "What is saying? When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, give a for your for yourselves, then you shall say to Aharum, take your staff.'" Some of mic is kind of in and out. Hold on for a second. Give him another mic. Y'all have to change the mic out. It's better. Hold on for a second. One more people to miss now because you can't in and out. You can't hear it. You're going in and out. Yes, sir. You know, my, we'll give him a second. So, and we just kind of looking at these things since we were talking about um, what they've gone through and not eating the fat. It's, it's important to just kind of look at some of these things too and just kind of look at disciplines and watch how things um, work and how they kind of play themselves out. <clears throat> okay. All right. When Pharaoh speaks to you saying Well you're seven and five? Uh seven and nine. Seven and nine. Yes, okay. sir. Go ahead. Give a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aharun, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a Nakash. Mm-hmm. So Musha and Aharun came to Pharaoh, and thus they did just as Yahuwah had commanded. Mm -hmm. And Aharun threw his staff down before Pharaoh. And what happened? And before his Abedin. Mm -hmm. And it became a Nakash. Mm -hmm. Then Pharaoh also called for the Kakma Anashim and for, for the, the sorcerers. Anashim and the sorcerers. And they also, the magicians of Mizraim, did the same with their secret arts. They did the same thing with their arts. For everyone threw down his staff and they turned into Nakash. Mm -hmm. But... Aharun's staff swaddled up their staffs. Yep. Yet Pharaoh's lob was hardened, and he did not shama to them, as Yahuwah had said. Then Yahuwah said to Musha, Pharaoh's lob is stubborn. He refuses to let the arm go. Mm -hmm. Go to Pharaoh in the morning. Behold, he is going out to the Mayim, and station yourselves to meet him on the bank of the Nahar. And you shall take in your hand the staff that was turned into a nakash. Yeah. You shall say to him, Yahuwah, the all of the Abarim, sh sent me to you, saying, Let my arm go, that they may serve me in Bamadbar. Mm -hmm. But behold, you have not Shama until now. But you hadn't listened to now? Come on. Thus says Yahuwah, by this you shall know that I am Yahuwah. Come on. Behold, I shall strike upon the Mayim that is in the Nahar with the staff that is in my hand, mm -hmm. and it shall be turned to Dom. Mm -hmm. The fish that are in the, in the Nahar shall moot, and the Nahar shall become foul, and the Mishrite shall become weary of drinking Mayim from the Nahar. Mm -hmm. Then Yahuwah said to Musha, say to Aharun, take your staff and stretch out That's your hand. That's fine. That's fine. We, we, we're just kind of looking at that. Look, get that 12th chapter of the book of uh, Yeukanon, <coughs> 1234. Yeukanon, they call it John. And you see what happened? Their heart was hardened. You know 
The Ukanon, they call it John 12, 34. Listen. The arm um, answered him and said, we have Shama from the Torah that the Mashiach shall be established alone. Y'all hear that? They heard, they learned from the Torah that the Mashiach gonna be established for alone. And we ought to knew that anyway because he told Dao that he was gonna set it bend, it's gonna be a bend, it's gonna sit upon the throne. That's right. Alone. He said it wasn't gonna fail. So they understood when he was saying he was the <coughs> Mashiach what that meant. Because Dao was Mashiach. That's Remember, right. Remember they went with him. See a lot of stuff you don't pay attention to, do you? You just look at Mashiach, it means to, this is what they did, he ordained, he anointed him. And when they anointed Dao, he was set up and he told Dao that he was gonna establish his throne for alarm and alarm. So whoever was gonna be the person that was gonna sit in that seat was going to be there forever, long time. So that's why they would make a statement saying that we've heard that the Mashiach was gonna be for alarm for a long time because that would only make sense if you were knowledgeable of who? Dao and the bereaved he made. That's right. But people not, because they New Testament. And New Testament don't let them go but so far. And they just say, God, the Bible said, right here in John, that, that doesn't make sense. Unless I see there, it has to be practical. They told you they learned it from the Torah. They could have never learned it from Matthew. They couldn't have learned from Mark. They had already gone through the Torah. That's right. This. Okay? Yes, sir. Which we'll look at the Tanakh, they look at the Nabiim, first five books is going to be Torah law. But they said, we've learned that this man is going to exist longer. Y'all got it? Even when, um, when Yahushua, I mean, when Musha told him that Yahushua was going to raise up a Nabal, like unto who? Under me. He said, him, you're going to hear. That's right. So he said, you got a problem hearing me. You're going to hear him, though. And it's going to be whoever don't hear him. That man going to wipe you right the face of the lawn. You're going to take you off the surface. Listen. How can you say that the Ben of Adam must be lifted up? And who is this Ben of Adam? See, they want to say that. They're trying to figure out how he's going to be lifted up. Come on. Yahushua said to them, what is the Aura shall be with you only for a little while. That's what they said. Halak, while you still have the Aura. And you walk while you got the light. Lest Kashak shall overtake you. See that? Lest sin overtake you. The Come one on. who Halak in Kashak does not know where he is going. Mm -hmm. See that? The one that walking in the dark, how could he know? You just prove that out. Ms. Ryan sat still for three days. Mm -hmm. You know how stupid you are to the fact that he didn't teach them that and they sat still for three days. You know why? They didn't know where they were going. Yeah. You didn't know that, did you? That's why he told you nobody to move out of their place. Cause they, but guess who would understand that? People who knew the Torah. Because they knew in the writings that they sat still for three days because it was so dark. Guess what? And he's looking at you saying, I couldn't imagine why y'all still doing this. You don't even know where you're going. The misright, they sat still. So when he's telling you to be still and see, what was he trying to tell you? You don't know where you're doing. You don't know what you're doing and you don't know where you're going. That's what we're trying to get them to say. Be still because you don't know where you're going and you don't know what you're doing. Listen. While I'm reading with you. Listen. While you still have the Aura, a man in the Aura. See, now you need to believe in it. Your confidence need to be in the Aura, in the light. Come on. So that you may become beneath of the Aura. See that? So you can become. Y'all got it? Listen, you want to be begotten of the Aura. Think about this. When the Shamash was there, he created the other Aura's from that Aura. So he's trying to tell you how to work and you can do the same. You can become our ore from the our ore. That's how he made. He made light from light. Let me ask you a question. Do anybody have a candle? Anybody have two candles? It's, I'm sorry, how do you say? You know you can light a candle with another lit out, put out candle. He got him, he got high. How, exactly, how do you light that candle? <clears throat> so where did that candle get its light? From darkness? It got it from our ore. I'm trying to do it, help you out. I know you're stupid. They'll be home with two counters doing like this, striking them against each other. That's, listen, and I wouldn't stop you because that's what your intelligence level at. I know how light comes. Light is begotten from light. It has to come from light. That's why he told you Elohim was the eye or. Right. So what are you thinking? No light exists of itself. It comes from light. Yeah. Come on. Yahushua spoke these Dabarim and went and was hidden from their presence. Mm -hmm. There were many odds that he did in their own. What but happened? despite this, they did not amun in him. 
Why? This was to fulfill the debar of Yahshiyahu the Nabi that Yahuwah said. What is sign? Who has among our report. And? To whom was the arm of Yahuwah revealed. What happened? For this reason, they were not able to Ammon, mm -hmm. because again, Yeshayahu said, he, was, he has blinded their own and hardened their lob, or else they may see with their own, and their lob may bana, and they may return, Understood. and they shall be healed. You ain't going to believe it. <coughs> so what you think the purpose was why Pharaoh told you that who was Yahuwah that he should Ammon in him? He would have turned. He would have turned. So he made sure he didn't know him. I hadn't seen it, ear hadn't heard. You ain't gonna believe it. Hadn't even entered into his heart. The things Allah had prepared for them that are hardened, he revealed it to us. See, the only reason why he hardened no people's heart, they didn't know why Yahushua had hardened the people's heart that were listening to him. If those people had turned, how am I work the other signs? Mm. Right. I won't get to work these signs. Uh. That's why they couldn't believe. But see, how they understand it is what they just read in the book of Matthew, Yahoo, the 12th chapter, I mean, the book of Yahuqan on the 12th chapter. That's not how I understood it. Right. I understood it from the Torah. Right, right. He clearly told you why I hardened his heart. Right. Because I got to work these signs. Right. I won't worry about it either. Be a New Testament creature. Or you can be an intestine creature. That means you don't get pooped out anyway. See, I know this ain't important to you guys, but there's a lot of things you need to pay attention to. There are not coincidences. In order for him to work the signs, it was imperative that these things happen. Okay? Yes, so now we'll try to look at some things and try to get some consideration about them. Okay? Let's go to the, uh, let's look at, mm, let's look at that fourth chapter. How about that? That fourth chapter book of U, U Allah Shemu. Four and four. They call it Exodus. Make it four and three. That's what I want. Listen. Then he said, throw it on the Aduma. So he Hold threw on. it. Hold on, back me up. Make it four and one then. Yes, sir. Listen, four and one. <coughs> then Musha answered and said, And behold, they shall not among me, nor shall Shama to my call, for they may say, Yahuwah has not appeared to you. That's what they're going to say. Yahuwah said to him, What is that in your hand? And he said, A staff. Mm -hmm. Then he said, Throw it on the Adumah. So he <coughs> threw it on the Adumah, mm -hmm. and it became a Nakash, yep. and Musha fled from it. That's what it did. But Yahuwah said to Musha, stretch out your hand and grasp it by its tail. So he stretched out his hand and caught it, and it became a staff in his hand. That's what he looked at. So that's what he looked at. He took it and cast it out. So let's look at something right quick. At the 21st chapter of the book of Matthew, 21 to 11. <coughs> Listen. And the crowd said, This he is the Nabi Yashi he is the Nabi Yahushua from not Nazareth, which is in Galil. <coughs> Y'all hear that? That's what they said, he's the Nabi, which is a Nazareth. And what did he do? And Yahushua went into the Mashakan of the Alahim and drove out from there all the merchants and customers in the Mashakan mm -hmm. and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. Mm -hmm. And he said to them, Behold, it is Katab that my Beth shall be Kara. Turn the heat on one a little, just one of them. They're going to burn them all up just a little bit. I like it, but I see them. Mm. Listen. My Beth shall be Kara, the Beth of Palal, but you have made it into a den of robbers. That's tight. Give me the uh, 23 and 23, Matthew Yahoo. 23, yes, 21. <coughs> Listen. 
and whoever, Shaba. 23 and 1. 23 and 1. 23 and 1. Y'all didn't hear me clear it up and say 23 and 1? I thought you said 21. I'm sorry. All right, 23 and 1. That's fine. Then Yahushua spoke to the crowds and to his Talmudim, saying, What is saying? The scribes in the parashim sit in the seat of Moshe. That's what they said. Where they sit at? In the seat of Moshe. That's tight. That's tight. What was the purpose of that? Because in the 21st chapter, in 11, 12, he went into the Mashkan. What did he overturn? The seats of the money. The chain. tables? I changed the table. <clears throat> Something else he turned over. The seats? What should you to sit in the seat? Your tail? <laughs> so if you ever turn the chair, what they put there behind that? In the seat. No, they put it behind on the ground. On the ground. Pay attention. Don't take that long. Pay attention. He told them to take them by the tail. Right. Pay attention. These were odds he was working. Yeah. You wouldn't catch it because you're a New Testament creature. Mm. You done missed it. Why, that's why I took you to show you where they sat at. Yeah. They sat at Musha's seat. Where you, if, I took, if I grab you by your tail, where am I going to grab you at? At your foot? No. Your hair? So when he overturned the seat, where they put the people sitting them at? Yeah. Where he just told you these people sit at? Musha's seat. Mm, that's amazing. Because in the 12th chapter, it was amazing. Because he wound up talking in the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew Yahoo, and he called him a generation of what? The Kosh. So he threw the snakes on the ground. Yes, sir. I'm confused. I was confused. I was kind of confused. It's confused. It's confused about that. Give me the book of Oriah, chapter 24. <clears throat> Twenty-four. Pick me up at twenty-four, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-four. Right quick. Listen. Some Anashim with us went to the Kubar and found it just as the Nashim had said. That's what they did. And they did not see him. And they did not see him. <clears throat> he said to them, "Alas, you who lack da'a, you that lack knowledge, and slow of lob to Amun, mm -hmm. and all that the Nabaim have spoken, and all that they spoke." Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Was it not necessary for the Mashiach to bear all these things and to be brought into his kaboo? That's what they said. So where you start at? Then he began with Musha. And did what? And with all the Nabaim. Do what did he do? And explained to them all of the Kitabim that spoke about him. That's what he said. Verse 37. Listen. But they were shocked and terrified and thought that they were seeing a Ruach. Mm-hmm. He said to them, what, what is it to you that you are alarmed? That's what and he said. Look at that. Can you believe that? You know what these folk did? <coughs> these folks sat here and thought they done seen a ghost or something. Done the thing I ever seen in my life. Listen to this. What is it to you that you are alarmed and why have such thoughts Come up to your log. Mm -hmm. See my hands and my regard. That's so, amazing. That's amazing. Why was he trying to show him his hands? That's was right. Was that an arts? That's right. Mm. That's amazing. He wanted to show him his hands. That's right. That's amazing. That's what Musha did. Yes, sir. Same thing Musha did. That's right. Showed him his hand. <clears throat> just amazing. Start looking at the eyes, just amazing. Mm -hmm. When you pay attention, you just kind of watch things. Let's jump back over to that fourth chapter of the book of U Allah Shemu. When we left out four and two, four and three? Yes, sir. Four uh -huh. and uh, four and five. All right, come on that they may among that Yahuwah, the all of their abode, and the all of Abraham, the all of Yasakak, and the all of Jacob have appeared to you. Yeah. 
Yahuwah furthermore said to him, now put your hand into your bosom. Mm. So he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. Yeah. I look like a ghost. Then Go he ahead. said, put your hand into your bosom. So he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out of his bosom, behold, it was restored like his basar. Mm -hmm. It come shall on. come to pass if they shall not amon you nor he the call of the first odds. Yeah. They may amon the call of the last odds. Is that believe the last one? <clears throat> Isn't that right? Yes, so that so they weren't they weren't supposed to believe it. The last one was the one they're gonna believe. Mm -hmm. But he still had to work them. Listen. It shall come to pass what happened? if they shall not amon even these two odds and shall not shama to your call, yeah. then you shall take of the Mayim of the Nahar and pour it on the dry Adumah. Mm -hmm. And the Mayim shall be which you take from the Nahar shall become dumb on the dry Adumah. Nobody said. What happened? Then Mushah said to Yahuwah, Please, Adani, I am not the Ish of Dabarim, even from yesterday, even from the third Yun, since saying. you have spoken to your Abad. Yeah. For I am slow of speech slow and of speech. slow of tongue. And slow of tongue. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yahuwah said to him, What is saying? Who has made each pa? Who made each mouth? Or who makes him mute or deaf? Who make him deaf or who make him where he can't speak? Or seeing or, or blind. Or seeing or the blind. Is it not I, Yahuwah? Said, Don't I do that? Yes, sir. What happened? Now go and I shall be with your pa and shall teach you what you shall speak. That's all you need right now. <clears throat> That's all y'all need. Let's see something right quick. Pick me up at that Matthew Yahoo chapter 27. Hmm. 27, 39. Make it 40. Matthew Yahoo. Listen. And they said, you who would demolish the Hakal and build it in three Yamim, save your life. You know what they said? Come on. And if you are the being of Allahim, come down from the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the, Ra the, the Rosh Kohanim, along with the scribes and Zakanim, also, also mocked him and, and saying, he saved others, but he is not able to save himself. Mm -hmm. If he is the Malak of Yasharal, let him now come down from the crucifixion. Then we shall amon in him. Then we'll believe in him. He trusts in Allahim. Now let him rescue him if he desires him. That's what he said. For he said, I am the Ben of other Allahim. That's what he said. Come on. Even the robbers who were crucified with him insulted him in a similar way. There was Kashak over all the Arats from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. At about the ninth hour, Yahushua Sayak out in a loud call, Ali, Ali, Lama Sabatana. That is to say, my all, my all, why have you abandoned me? Yes. And some unashamed of those standing there shama it and said, He is calling for all Yahoo. Mm hmm. One of them ran quickly and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar. He placed it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. Yes. But the other Anashim said, leave him alone, and we shall see if all Yahoo shall come to save him. Yes. And another Ish took a spear and thrust, thrust it through his side, and out came Dom and Mayim. Yes. But Yahushua Sayak out again with a loud call, and his Ruach departed. That's good. That's good. That's good. A couple of things I'm sure y'all missed too. So we'll look at something else. How about that? Give me the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15. <clears throat> Listen. And he said to them, what go into the whole alarm and what preach the tube news to all about? creation. To all creation. Uh -huh. One who among and is immersed, he shall be saved. That's what he said. The one that among and is immersed shall be saved. Listen. But whoever does not among Wh shall be made believe. guilty. That's going to be guilty. You're going to be condemned. Violated. Go ahead. These are the odds that shall accompany those who among. That's what he said. These are the sign that accompany them, that goes with them, that believe. Like what? They shall cast out Shadim and Mashem. They shall speak 
in your tongues. They speak because when Yahushua was talking, you ain't gonna believe it. When he got through talking the seventh chapter, they say he didn't talk like other people. He talked like one of the authority. <clears throat> His tongue was different. They didn't know that when Musha, you never heard them talk about him stumbling anymore, did it? Come on. They shall pick up Nakash with their hands. You ain't gonna believe it. So he overturned them seats. He told them folk they were generation of vipers. Mm -hmm. So you missed the sign. You missed the sign. In the book of Colossians 2 and 15, it told you he made a show of them openly. You missed it. You're looking at him to pick up literal snake. He told those people were better. That he told you they were generation of vipers. They That's told right. you this. They told you that Pharaoh had a bunch of, all him said, it was a bunch of snakes. Right. And all he did was, he told them where to pick them up at, didn't he? Yes, sir, by the tail. Flip their tail over. Put their tail on the ground, grab mm -hmm. them. What does they do, son? And they drink deadly poison, and it shall not harm them. You ain't gonna believe it. <clears throat> One day, Yahushua had a supper, Bostick. And he gave them the cup. You know what he told them to do? Take ye and drink it. This is my dumb. If you notice, everything died that was in the river that had drunk the dome. These stupid people run around trying to drink strychnine. All he did was give you the cup. You were told you couldn't eat the dome. It was going to kill you. That's why you could drink any deadly thing. It wouldn't hurt you. Because if you eat it, it'll kill you. Mm. Not if you drink it. I get paid to do this for you. Yeah. That's too. 